like that? Mm-hmm. Very much. It's kind of short, but I've got nice knees for it. I've got a lot you of... You have very nice knees. You better not let Nick hear you say that. Oh. It's a nice party, isn't it? Oh, yes, it's a very nice party. I hate it. Well, I can't think why. It's full of nice people, lots of nice... Uh... Lots of nothing. Oh. That's all these parties are. Everybody trying to connect with something. Kelly, do you like my name? Temple. Yeah, Temple's a very nice name. It doesn't fit me. My real name is Liz. I just love Liz. You love Liz, but your name is... Well, why... Um, <clears throat> why did you change it? Nick. Nick changed it when I was a starlet. Nick changed everything. Did you know that Goya had a mistress? I beg your pardon? Goya, the painter. I did what you told me to do today. I went to the Prado, and there was Goya all over the place. Yes, he was. His mistress was fat. I'd never do what she did. I certainly hope you would. What did she do? Pose nude. Oh. I've been asked, too, you know, by artists of some reputation. I have no reason to disbelieve you, my child. Well, why was it like that? <laughs> In the Prado, I mean. There were two pictures of her, Goya's girlfriend, one with clothes and one without a stitch anywhere. Yes, well, she was a duchess. So a duchess, big deal. Yeah, well, she was the duchess of Alba, you see, and her husband was, uh, well, he found out, you know, he heard that, that Goya had painted her in the nude and he was really, whew. but Goya being very hip, he painted very quickly, he painted another version of the same thing, you see. But this one was in a gown. Oh. that clever? You're a very pretty man. Oh, you're very kind. Did you know that? No. Nick says you're a tennis bum. Uh -huh. That you don't do anything but play tennis. How come with all your brains, all you do is play a nutty game like tennis? Honey, it's what I do. Everybody does what they do best. I don't know if I like the sound of that one, Buster. He does that more and more lately. Hurts people or embarrasses them. I don't understand him. I think you understand him very well, my dear. You know something? You're only the second person who ever gave me credit for having a brain. Hey, isn't it right? Who was the first one? Kevin. Kevin. He was my steady when I was a cheerleader at Watertown High. Oh. Can you imagine me in pom-poms and wearing a big W? Certainly I can. I wanted to be a school teacher. History. What do you think of that? But then Kevin went in the army and I dropped out. I went to Hollywood. Hitched. Boy, I could write a book about what it's like hitching rides to Hollywood. Everybody wanted to give me silk stockings. Say something. No. I just want to listen to you talk. No. Tell me something important about El Greco. I saw his pictures in the Prado today, too. Why did they call him El Greco? Uh, uh, because he was Greek. El, El Greco, the Greek. Well, why did he paint like that? Long. Everyone long. Well, I guess he just... No, really, what it probably was... He just found, you know, in his work and all, he discovered that it made his figures more forceful. Crazy. Did he have a mistress, too? I don't know myself, but I can look it up for you if you like. No, 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 let me. I just love to look up things. At Watertown High, Miss Kaplan said I handed in the best report she'd ever seen. I did one on wheat, 40 pages long. You're very nice. Did you know that? You're a very nice man. Mm. Because he had a defect of the eyesight. That's the way he saw the people. He saw them long. How does that grab you? <laughs> I love you, Temple. Don't say that, Kelly. I belong to Nick. If you're going to love me, don't make it important. Well, that's what I mean. I, I love you unimportantly. Good. That makes me feel secure. And I want to go away with you today. Please. Where? Toledo. Why Toledo? 
because that's where El Greco lived and where he painted. Kelly, don't you know anything? Oh, Kelly. Oh, I think I'm going to cry. Why the heck do you want to do that, honey? There was a picture, just like this, in my history book. And here it is. Here it is. Now, you want to know why it's like that? Why it was built there and everything high like that and the river on three sides? Because it was easy to defend. Yes, I know that. The Moors built it. Do you know why they called them Moors? Uh -uh. Because they were from Morocco. A fellow was from there. <laughs> That's right. Now, 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 what gray thought has flitted its way across the Kafka landscape of your mind? You get up on a hill, and you look across the river, and there it is. All your history. It just, it just all seems to come together, you know? It's wonderful. You're wonderful. Why? Because you're eager and alive and you want to take a bite out of the world like it was an apple. Here's something else. You know that? You tell me I'm wonderful and I ask you why. And you didn't tell me I have great legs. You're a lot like Kevin from Watertown. Where is Kevin now? What's he up to? Why do you ask? Oh, I don't know. He's, uh... You still in love with him? Yes. Oh, not the kind of love that comes up and grabs you. I can't even remember what he looks like, really. But I'll always love him. Why is that, Kelly? Oh, maybe it's because he's all mixed up in a time when you were... When I was innocent? Well, that's not exactly what I meant. Yes, it is. When I was innocent. Yeah, that's what I meant. Nick's very good to me, Kelly. All I have to do is ask. That's not bad, is it? What do you want me to tell you, Temple? Well, the way it is, Kelly, is I'm Nick's girl. He doesn't tell me. I owe him a lot. I get to travel, and I get to wear great clothes. I wasn't really making it in show business, Kelly. What else could I have done? You could have been a history teacher. I would have been a lousy history teacher. Maybe. Maybe not. But I do have great legs, don't I? Lady, one of these days I'm going to tell you to pack up and leave. You weren't looking, Nikki. I just left. Oh, isn't that nice? He became a nephew? Well, yes. Well, <laughs> actually, you see, his Aunt Ruth just got married. She lives in the Bronx. And uh, we got a wire from his mom. Said uh, that his new uncle just, just, well, he just nuts over with silk shirts. So I was going to have him get some in Rome, because that's the best place. Well, we'll send him a couple from Madrid. Well, when is Scotty coming back? Tomorrow. Will you tell him goodbye for me? You leaving, Nick? We're good? Yeah. Okay. Where are uh, you going to go? Well, that's what I really came here to talk to you about, Kelly. I want you to tell me if I'm not some kind of a nut. I'm going back to Watertown, and I'm going to finish high school, and I'm going to be a history teacher. I think that that... Hold it, hold it, hold it. Now, my question to you is this. Do you think it's too old to start teaching school at 31? What? Hold it, hold it. Not 31. 34. <clears throat> my dear, the truth is, age 34 is almost the perfect age to begin, <clears throat> well, uh, uh, matriculating toward teaching history. Not only that, but by the same token, you may receive an opportunity to marry the principal instead of some lousy kid physics teacher. That's true. 
Then you approve. Yes, I'm mean, approve. What are you doing? Well, I'm I'm uh I want you to have this. What is it? Haha, -ha, there you are, you see? It's a high school class ring. Mm -hmm. Yours? Mm-hmm. You're kidding. No. Well, you better not be kidding because I want it. I really want it. I love it. I just love it. And I'm going to wear it all the time. At least until the principal gets me here. <laughs> well, now, listen, when a guy... When a guy gives a girl his class ring, you know, that's... He's supposed to get kissed or something, isn't he? Well, then, come on here. I know. What do you think you're doing? Get out of my bedroom. I mean it, Nick. Get out of here. Eyeshadow, tissues. All a girl needs to hit the road. Come here. What are you trying to do? Make magic? You're gonna kiss me and I'm gonna lose my self-control? You're not gonna leave me, Temple. Are you pleading with me, Nikki? All right, yes, I'm pleading. Plead. Baby, I've been good to you. I'm worth it, Buster, and don't you ever forget that. I never do. Next thing you'll tell me is that you love me. I do. Oh, brother. The time has come for you and I to curtsy ourselves out of each other's lives. I said wait! For what? Temple, you're gonna stay. Nikki, you put one hand on me, and I'm gonna figure out a way to kill you. I'm not gonna touch her, I promise. I just wanna show you to somebody. Who? Scotty. Come on, Scotty's in Rome. Uh-uh. I've got him, baby. And if you walk out on me, he's gonna die. You're putting me on. No. What have they done to you? Scotty, what have they done? Hostage? Well, they had a lot of them in history. You'll enjoy it. Meaning if Scott calls the law, you'd shoot me. That's right. Mr. Evil. Really pretty dull. My life is definitely not dull. I have everything a girl could possibly want. I've got... Miss Jones? Uh, Miss Jones, are you there? Yes. Yes, I am. I assume that you are not going to Watertown, Miss Jones. In Watertown? The shower curtains don't go all the way around. Why was it a mistake? I just came down here for my ring. That's all. I left my ring here on my necklace. And I came down for it. What do I care what's going on down here? That's your business, sweetheart. You have to kill me now, too, don't you? You named it, baby. You want to know something? I deserve it. I really deserve it. I believed you. Uh, I have not met this young lady. Um... A good many people feel that she will uh, be one of the new stars uh, of the future. She will be on NBC's I Spy. Everybody's on I Spy. Yeah. 
She's coming up and doing a nice spy role, too. Nice spy. I think on uh, January 25th, and she's a new young actress. Would you welcome Carol Wayne? Carol? <laughs> Girls, don't huh? they? Musicians like girls, don't they? Yes, yes. That's uh, one of the rules when you get in the union. You must sign a pledge that says, I like girls. I think that's nice. Uh, how are you? I'm fine, thank you. Uh, I got it. You do look... We've had your sister on this show several times, haven't we? Yeah. Nina? Nina Wayne? Yes, my sister, the movie star. That's right. She uh, was uh, working at the Copacabana, if I remember. Latin Quarter. Latin Quarter. Latin Quarter. I don't remember. Uh, <laughs> and she came on this show... And they saw her on this program, and she went to a... a she tele just did a great movie. She just yeah. did a great movie. <laughs> Jack Lemon, Elaine May, and Peter Falk. Is she in that? Yes. I, I haven't seen that yet. You, you sound like her, too. Well, I guess it's because we have the same mother and father. <laughs> that, that, would, that would probably do it, wouldn't it? That would probably do it. Um, you're going to do a nice spy, huh? I did one. You did a nice spy. Did a nice spy. <laughs> you're a lot like your sister. I didn't understand. I didn't understand her either. Uh, no. Well, it's, it's very pretty. It's all, all pink, isn't it? I like to look pink and white and pretty. You like to look pink and white. And pretty. I'm having a lot of fun just being a girl. Really? You like being a girl? Yeah. Isn't there a song of that I enjoy? Yes, uh, there is. Being a girl? Yes. Your staff doesn't like girls, though. Our staff doesn't like girls? No. Why not? Oh, they, they put in the, uh... <laughs> they, well, you have them in there, do you? <laughs> yeah, but very tiny staff. Pull them out. Why? Uh, uh, I've, I've never, never quite understood this because uh, occasionally on our show, a lady, a uh, young lady, will wear a dress with a little uh, décolleté, what would you call it? I think so. And uh, they come in and will put a little piece of net or something. If, now, this is a dress that you would wear I out this on in... I Spy. On I Spy? But in see, they'll let I Spy do that. And they can appear on those shows. Spies are pushovers, aren't they? <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm not too familiar with a spying racket, but uh, maybe they are. But why do they let them do it on a dramatic show? Uh, I'm talking to our producer, yes. Mr. Oh, because Stark. Because of our strict uh, censor. Uh, you know the strict censor. We have. Miss, we have, yes. Oh, yeah. Miss Priscilla Goodbody is our censor. <laughs> <laughs> she uses pins, though, and it hurts. She uses pins? And, and they hurt. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think a dress should stay up, but don't you think that's going to uh, a little, little far? Uh, how did you get started in... Uh, in the, the showbiz, the showbiz game. <laughs> what, what did you do? Did you dance at the uh, Latin Quarter? Uh, no, uh, when well, my sister and I had an ice skating act. We're strong there? American athletic girls. Yeah, where'd, where'd you ice skate? Uh, ice skate, professional show. We were very I didn't good. know you were an ice skater. Well, we had long ponytails and long legs and skated together. We were really cute. Well, well, what, kind, what, kind of an, what kind of an act? Uh, <laughs> what kind of an act did you do? A sister act. A sister act. Well, I, but yes, I know that. I know. Did you have costumes like a pony or something? Or, well, you know, they put on those costumes no, and they... we were always girls. Always girls. Uh, you're fascinating. You're a very fascinating girl. You have any other I sister? I think you're very cute, hmm? too. I watch you all the time in Hollywood. Do you really? Yeah. Thank you very much. It's a nice little face. <laughs> Uh, we'll take space identification and try to get control of this, and we'll be we'll be right back after words for your local state. I believe it. You like Sara Lee? Oh, she's delicious, isn't she? Mm -hmm. <laughs> you like surprises? Sara Lee has a very special one for you. Watch this. Well, this young lady is, uh, is Carol Wayne, right? Yes. Uh, you've made have you made any motion pictures yet? Yes, I did. Peter Gunn for Blake Edwards at Paramount. Oh, well, he's, he's a very good director. Yes, he was very nice to me. You're quite young. How long have you been in Hollywood? Uh, not quite a year yet. Yeah. Hollywood's kind of a, a difficult place for a young girl to go, especially a pretty young girl, because, you know, it's a, it can be kind of a rough town. You know, I mean, men-wise. Men-wise? Oh, I like men. I have a lot of fun with men. <laughs> You don't have the problems that many girls have. I mean, dates or guys, oh, you know. Oh, I have a lot of boyfriends. Do you? Yeah. Well, what do you do when you go out on dates? Well, I go a lot to the movies, to dinner, 
Mm -hmm. With no serious romances at all. Oh, well, every romance is a serious romance, I think. Really? Sure. You're not married, though? No. Are you, are you going to stay single while you pursue your uh, a career? Well, I would very much like to be a wife and a mother. I mean, that would really be a... That's your end, end result? Oh, I think so, yes. I think that's what girls are for. To be wife. <laughs> yes, they're very good at being wives and mothers. Uh, in other words, you just wouldn't want to be a career girl all your life. And... Oh, no, I think that's um, a little sad, baby. What kind of pictures do you, do you like to make? I mean, this, was this romantic? Have oh, you played the romantic uh, girl in it? Well, you see, I have a little problem and being typecast already. All I've played are girlfriends and mistresses, and nobody thinks of me as anything. Wife or mother. Oh. <laughs> well, you, you're just not the wife and mother type. That's why I guess I'm doing the other thing. So they give you... So they... They give you all the uh, seduct seductresses role. Oh, yes, I that had a type. kissing scene. Kissing scene? Yes. You sound like you liked it. Well, uh, I had a, my first kissing scene with Noel Harrison on The Girl from Uncle. Noel He's Harrison? He's very cute. Mm -hmm. He really was. <laughs> it was 9 o'clock in the morning, though, and... Uh, yeah, it was it the big a, kissing scene. It took a few takes to get it right. Yeah, because nine o'clock in the morning, you're not, uh, you're not in a kissy mood, are you, at nine o'clock? No, you need a little to get it going. <laughs> well, I was really doing bit. just fine, but they kept taking it from one angle and another angle. Do you go to school out there? I mean, do they give, have dramatic school they, where they teach you all these things? Uh, well, I personally find that uh, I do better just being myself. I've taken... Uh, <laughs> gone to dramatic school and uh but i'll tell you everything i do uh, turns out kind of funny really people don't take me very seriously well how about your kissing scenes you have to do those for real though don't you oh yes i always kiss for real <laughs> i'm a regular kissy face i like to kiss See, you do have kissy face. <laughs> just let me get wound up here <laughs> But they don't teach you how to do this. That's just something that comes natural. Well, uh, they coach you a little. I mean, they show you what side to do it on. and. Uh, you have a good side? Most people have, you know, what they figure is a good side or a bad side. Nobody's ever told me. Well, when they photograph you, I mean, Ed has a... Don't you have a good yeah. side? Which is your good side? Well, I think this side is my good side. It's hard, hardly much to choose from, but I think this side is... <laughs> Do you like that side? Thank you. But you know what I mean, the way they photograph you. Either from straight on or... Yes. <laughs> um, if you were the uh, director, John, what side would you uh, pick? Yes, what side would you pick? Well, uh, I, I'm, looking, I'm looking at the monitor now to see... To take a shot of her so I look at the monitor. That's a nice thing. Well, you photograph well from, uh, from all angles. So it really doesn't make too much difference. Thank you. Well, what's your next big picture coming up? Gee, I don't know. <laughs> well, do uh, you go around and audition for parts and... Uh... Oh, yes, I have managers and agents and... Really? They all help me, yeah. Do you have to pay them a lot of money? I mean, are you saving any money? Oh, yes, well, I'm, I'm not really very good with money, but... Then you have somebody manage your money for yes, you? Yes, I do. Now, where do you live out in Hollywood? I live in the hills. Over, uh, you know, hanging over. Looking at the knife? Yes, I would, I would guess that. Uh, where, uh, I mean, is, 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 is it a home or an apartment, a canoe? I mean, you know, what kind of a, a, a boat do you have? An Indian Hogan? I don't know where I'm going, but I'll strike dirt in a moment here. I have a house that has a lot of windows, very bright and cheery. I love California. I've been living in California now for about a year, and it's, oh, the sun shines and the people are nice. We have a lot of weirdness there, but you mm. have a lot of weirdness here. Yes, we do. I was walking down the street today, and a woman started walking behind me, the sweetest, like 80 years old, little fur coat and little black goulashes, just adorable. She started saying... Black goulashes? <laughs> yeah. Probably just came from an Italian restaurant or something. <laughs> she, she kept saying to me, I know you, you girls with all that hair and makeup, you make love all night. She said that like ten times behind me. I finally dug into a store. 
You mean oh, that's that? not very nice no. to say things like that. No. Yeah. Why don't you live in a place like, well, don't they have places out there where young actresses are like the studio club and, uh... I don't have many girlfriends. I'll tell you the truth. Uh... You don't have any girlfriends? No. I don't think I would like living with a lot of girls. Are you a loner? I think I am. See, they called me a loner. I just wondered if you were a loner. You like to be by yourself? Well, I like a lot of people. I mean, I like to meet a lot of people. I'm a good listener, and people like to talk to me. I find that people are basically insecure. And um, um, they think I'm sincere, and I'm not putting anybody on, and I listen to them, and they just tell me all sorts of things. You just wouldn't believe it. Oh, yes. Yes, I would. <laughs> yes, I'll believe that. No, you are good. Did you know that that's one of the qualities that men like in women? Men like to be fun. Men have a big ego, you know. They're very vain, and they like women who listen. And most women like to talk all the time about themselves, as I guess most men do. I'm all for girls being girls and boys being boys. I like it. Yeah. I think that is a fine, workable arrangement. Yes. <laughs> you know, and that's the way we, sh we should keep it. It's been our motto. Hmm? It's been our motto here. Let girls be girls, girls and boys, and boys be boys, boys, and never the twain. You're boring me, sweetie. But every big shot in the space program will be there. Don't you understand? Think of your career. I'm going to have a career in space. The newspapers, television, radio, there'll be reporters and photographers all over the place. And there you'll be, sweetheart, looking beautiful and gorgeous, telling them about your next picture. Huh? Now, now you've got to do this. Would I be the greatest manager in a business if I didn't know what I was talking about? Now, would I? Kiss Herman. Oh, I don't want to kiss Herman. Now, will you listen to me, Bootsy? I got a great idea that's going to get your picture on the front page of every newspaper in the country. You will be America's sweetheart. Kiss Herman. Ain't you even going to ask me what the great idea is? Will you ask me already? What's the great idea? You know what you're going to do at the benefit ball at the Space Center, huh? You're going to get yourself engaged to a handsome astronaut. Huh? Oh! Oh, we love it! You can certainly see she has talent. <laughs> Bootsy, how many times do I have to tell you, honey? He's adorable, he's divine, and he's all man. Ooh, that's the way I like him. You got me all excited, Sam. I can hardly wait to meet him. And he's on his way up. <laughs> oh, he's here! Hello there. I've been waiting for you. I'm Major Anthony Nelson. <laughs> and you're Bootsy Nightingale. <laughs> I've certainly been looking forward to meeting you. I, uh, I must have caught a slight cold. Uh, you understand? Uh, this is all man? You didn't talk like that before. Well, if you think I'm going out with him, you're out of your ever-loving mind. I, I assure you, this is just temporary. <laughs> I think I know someone who can cure this almost instantly. <laughs> You should just be patient. He sounds like he escaped from a cartoon. Get him out of here. What is your next false move? Oh, come in, come in. Say something. I love you. He'll do. Hey, uh, May, how would you like to escort Miss Nightingale to the benefit ball tonight? <laughs> Tell her that this voice condition is just temporary. Go ahead, tell her, tell her. Poor devil, that's what happens when you're up in space too long. <laughs> you, you know, I could spend the rest of my life looking at you. Oh, I dig you, too. I mean, it was like, wow, pow, the first time I set eyes on you. Robert? It's Ro Roger. <laughs> yes. And you can call me Bootsy Baby. Bootsy Baby. Excuse me. Uh, have you seen Major Nelson? Who? 
She means Mickey Mouse. <laughs> Mickey Mouse? I, I can't get over it. What can't you get over, baby? He's sitting here with you. Holding my hand. Holding your hand. <laughs> oh, 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 That's all right. I guess I'm a little nervous. You nervous? Why, I bet you just drive all the girls wild with your animal magnetism. Well, I wouldn't say I drive them wild. If there's I... anything I love, it's a modest hero. I just get chills all over thinking about those planets you go to. Mars and Juniper and... and Jupiter. And Venus. Venus, the planet of love. After we're engaged, you'll have to stay on the ground. <laughs> well, I can't stay on the ground. You see, we're working on this Apollo mission and to the moon and... After we're engaged? If that's what you want. If that's what I want, I want what you want. Right now, I want you to get off my foot. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, I'm sorry. I ripped your dress. I'll, I'll get the maid to sew it up. Don't move. Stay right until one he'll knock down the moon. <laughs> Lower your voice. <laughs> you're, you're talking about your fiancé. Are you kidding me? I'll go back to television first. <laughs> don't, uh, don't even say that in jest. <laughs> I've already hinted to the press that you're going to marry the astronaut. They don't grow on bushes, you know. <laughs> oh, that's all I needed. <laughs> now here comes Mickey Mouse. Oh, hello, I, I've been looking everywhere for you. I wanted Your to explain... Your voice! Oh, uh, yes, uh, I wanted to explain about I that. I love it. Huh? You can make the announcement. Just give me ten minutes. That's my girl. Uh, I'm Major Anthony Nelson. I was supposed to escort you. Oh, you don't have to tell me who you are, sweetie. I go to sleep every night with your picture under my pillow. Oh, I, I beg your pardon. If there's anything I love, it's a modest hero. I get chills all over thinking of those planets you go to. Mars and... Juniper. <laughs> Jupiter. And Venus. Venus, the planet of love. Well, I, I just talked to uh, Roger, and he was under the impression... He's a boy. <laughs> well, he's old enough to... I like men. <laughs> Roger says that you think you want to get married. Don't you? No, of course. One of these... Excuse me. This is the happiest moment of my life. Ladies and gentlemen, my dear What is fans, going on? I think she's I going to make a little wedding announcement. I want to take this opportunity to thank everyone oh. for making this possible for me. And they're not giving you an Oscar, sweetheart. Just make the announcement. <laughs> That's a trooper. Get up there. Make the announcement, honey. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, I've just become engaged to the most wonderful... morning, <laughs> everybody. Hi, fella. Isn't it a beautiful day to go flying? Major Healy has promised to take me for a ride in his very own space capsule. I'm so excited. I can just imagine the newspaper headlines now. Glamorous Hollywood star and handsome astronaut flinging their way to the moon. Nothing except that it is somewhat near to the table now. <laughs> My chair is lower than your chair. Bombay. And Bombay is in India. Oh, that is very much in India, yes, indeed. And uh, that is indeed the gateway to it. When all of a sudden... Well, that happened.
think that one of these bearers does not like the other one? It's a very hard time finding good help these days. Yes, you certainly have. Not a cocktail bunny. Right, right. Okay, kids, get ready for the big disappearing act. Choke. <laughs> uh, uh. <laughs> Uncle Arthur, this is no time to kid around. Who's kidding? Oh, okay, kids, the show's over. Now everybody into the dining room for ice cream and cake. Come on. <laughs> Send her back to the nearest Playboy Club. What's the matter with you, Sammy? She's not a Playboy bunny. It's Tabitha's rabbit. I don't care what it is. Just change it back into what it was. Don't get shook, Sammy, but there's something wrong with my powers. I sure would like to know how you did that. So would I. Uh, Uncle Arthur means that if he told you, then you'd know his secret. I hope you're not going to make this pretty young lady disappear. Oh. <laughs> well, this is um, Bunny. Bunny, Uncle Arthur's assistant, Mr. Tate. Hi. And uh, Mr. Sylvester. Hi. <laughs> My, this certainly is a fun party. <laughs> I don't know. Oh. Okay, then why don't I take On Bunny some? On second thought, Uncle Arthur can serve the ice cream. <laughs> okay, kiddies, here comes Uncle Arthur. <laughs> Stuff yourselves. <laughs> well, why does she have to change? Yeah, why? I like the other outfit better. Yes, but I think this one is safer. Besides, as soon as they've left, we're going to put you back in your own little fur coat. I don't care. I'm going to have some fun while it lasts. Oh, okay. Just stop doing what comes naturally. Well, that didn't take long. Bunny's a quick change artist, you know. I'm quick at everything. May I say, what a sensational dress that is. Do you really like it? I'm afraid it's a little tight. Nonsense. It looks like it was made for you. It was. Uh, all right, who's the wise guy who dropped the ice cream on the shoe? Uh-oh, sounds like he needs help. Excuse me. How come you have such funny little ears? <laughs> all right, Uncle Arthur, I'll take over here. I haven't seen you around here since... since... That's right. Too many memories. That must be the girl he's carrying the torch for. This could be the solution to everything. You haven't called me lately. Well, you didn't come to the phone, so what was the point? Well, anyway, I can see why you haven't. Oh, uh, this is Bunny. Bunny, Anita. Hi. Hi. Well, I, I've got to go. But if you do decide to call again, I promise to answer. It's a moral responsibility. In my honor? Mm-hmm. We're going to have, uh, Carrot ring. Oh! And hearts of lettuce salad. Oh, that sounds marvy, doesn't it? <laughs> and spinach souffle. So that's a vegetarian dinner. Hmm? Yes, how'd you like it? Delicious. This little lady seems to be enjoying it. Your eyesight must be perfect. I've never seen anybody so wild about carrots. Well, they're very good for you, you know. I promised Bunny I'll plant a carrot patch in the garden. And lettuce, too. Garden? At my place in the Berkshires. I'm taking Bunny up there with me tomorrow. Oh, really? I might as well tell them. We're engaged. Engaged? 
Well, when did this happen? On the way over here. Well, isn't that... That's very... Isn't it? Congratulations. I only wish Arthur were uh, present to hear the good news. Oh, uh, he'll hear about it all right. Bunny, why don't you help me clear? Uh, you're gonna have to get used to it, you know. Oh. You're so right. Oh, you all... Sure, but not right away. Oh, yes, right away, right away. <laughs> what? I'm sure that Bunny would like to have lots of children. Yes, lots and lots. Lots. How many? Hundreds. <laughs> Mr. Sylvester, how, how, how about a little brandy? Yes, uh, anything. Uh, did you double? <laughs> oh, yes, coming right up. Uh, the usual, Larry? Please, let me give you a... No? Well, you don't have to. What kind of animals do you hunt up there? Oh, just small game, you know, fox, beaver, rabbit. Rabbit? You shoot rabbits? Well, we're doing the farmers a favor, you know, rabbits are pests. Well, I never... Why did you do that? Because rabbits aren't pests. They're very nice. Nicer than people. Bunny, perhaps you'd like to go upstairs and freshen up. I certainly would. <laughs> Isn't that cute? <laughs> On your feet, honey bunny. I got a little trick I want to show you. Oh, I just love tricks. Good. <laughs> I, I said sex, not sex. <laughs> oh, uh, this, uh, this is your new boss, uh, Mr. Grisdale. How do you do? I'm Miss Pruitt, Angela Pruitt. Uh, Miss Pruitt, I think it's only fair to warn you, Mr. Grisdale here is a tough taskmaster. He won't stand for any delays or excuses. So, as soon as you hear your buzzer, you'd better be ready to, uh, hop to. Yes, sir. Will there be anything else? <laughs> Will there be anything else? She wants to know if you want something else. <laughs> That'll be all, Miss Pruitt. Well, I imagine uh, you're ready to get started. Here you are, Mr. Grisdale. Thank you, Miss. Uh... Oh, I'm so sorry. Oh, I'm, I'm sorry. It was my fault. I'll get it. I guess I wasn't looking at, uh, at what I was doing. Grisdale, oh! <laughs> let me see. All right, I'm all right. Oh. <laughs> all right, I got it. That'll be all, Miss Floyd. But everything's under control. Sit down, please. I want you to kiss the letter. What? I mean, take the letter. Penbrook Manufacturing Company, 311 West 4th Street, Valley Hills, Arkansas. Dear sir, in reference to your January 19th letter, the agitator plugs for the transmission sockets are reversible rotaries with galvanized pistons. On the other hand, the carburetor gaskets with the camshaft forks will have thermostatic synchronizers. Would you read that back, please? Penbrook Manufacturing Company, 311 West 4th Street, Valley Hills, Arkansas. Dear sir, in reference to your January 19th letter, the agitator plugs for the transmission sockets are reversible rotaries with galvanized pistons. On the other hand, the carburetor gasket... Miss Pruitt, that doesn't make any sense. I know, but that's what you said. It is? Never mind, I'll dictate a letter. Thank you, sir. Yes. Oh, oh, Miss Pruitt, um... I wonder if you could type up three copies of this, and uh, I'll need it before lunch. Before lunch? Uh, of course, if you think you can't handle it, I can get somebody else. Oh, no. It's just that I'm unfamiliar with my machine. I understand. 
yes. It is hereby suggested that we <laughs> utilize the IBM. Yes. Uh, this came by special messenger. Oh yes. Oh wait, it could require an answer. Ouch! Uh, Miss Pruitt. <clears throat> um, uh, we, uh, sit down, please. Miss uh, Pruitt, you've been my uh, secretary now for two weeks, and uh, I've uh, never known a better one. Thank you, Mr. Grisdale. Your uh, shorthand is fantastic. Your typing is marvelous, but uh, I'm going to have to let you go. Let me go? Yes, you see, Miss... Uh, Pruitt, you, uh, disturb me. Oh! What, what, what's wrong, Miss Pruitt? <laughs> this just keeps happening to me. I've lost eight jobs in the last five months. Eight? I try to be the best secretary I can, but that's never enough. My bosses always get disturbed. And then when they make a pass at me and I reject them, they fire me. <laughs> I can't afford to lose another job, Mr. Grisdale. Somehow, you seem different. But if my job depends on it, I'm yours. <laughs> Oh, no, Miss Pruitt. Uh, you don't seem to understand. And please don't let me go. I just can't face losing another job again. All right, Miss Pruitt. All right. All right. It's not my fault I disturb you. I know. I know. I just happened to look this way. Guess I ate right as a kid or something. No, Miss Pruitt, you don't have to apologize. I just have to get a hold of myself and stop behaving in this juvenile manner. Can you keep me? For the time being. Oh, Mr. Grisdale. I could kiss you. No, we've got to behave like two adults. I'm a man, you're a woman, and I don't have to keep reminding myself of the fact. Now, let's uh, clean off this desk and before they dust off old Willingham and bring him out of retirement. Here, foul this. Send this to shipping and receiving. You can put this through, and I'll need five copies of this. Gee, some of this print is awfully small. Can you make it out at all? Mm, not very well. Let me put on my glasses. You wear glasses? Yes, I just got them. In the event that the deadline is met... Miss Pruitt? Yes? Those glasses, they, uh... They do something for you. No, this idea alone will save you. Out. Thank goodness. Would it disturb you if I took off my glasses now? Oh, I hope so. We're on our uh, own time now. You busy tonight? Same fellow? Yeah. You've seen him every night this week. Yes, I hear he's a rising young executive. And I hear he owes it all to the help of his beautiful secretary. You say the sweetest thing. <laughs> oh, Mr. Grisdale. No, Miss Pruitt. <laughs> She isn't back. <laughs> She's back. Jackie White, Look. they never told me you were married. It's a long story. Talk fast. She's coming back. What is it? Blondie, over there. Don't touch me. Oh, boy, will you regret this. 
You tell them the day they can push us around like second-class females is gone. Now that we're liberated, you have to treat us like second-class men. Uh, Lieutenant, could we get started, please? All right, ladies, this is a lineup. You all know why you're here. Why? Suspicion of criminal assault on the person of this man. Him? Him? What's a criminal assault? <laughs> No use. You positive? Uh, Debbie's the chairman of our militancy committee. I think we bumped into each other at your last riot. I think we should call our lawyer. He's in jail. Then I think we should call our lawyer's lawyer. No hurry. Anytime you get put in jail, it helps the cause. And we become martyrs. As a matter of fact, I really envy those women who assaulted Mighty Mouse. Yeah, I don't. He's too scrawny. I wonder if they'll ever get caught. I hope so. You do? Certainly, it would be absolutely criminal if no one took credit for this crime. Well, if they don't catch them soon, this whole thing is going to blow right over. A milestone event like this just cannot be allowed to die away. Let's take the credit. Taking credit for somebody else's crime? That's a crime. Look, I say we assaulted you. And I say you didn't. What do you know? I did everything. I'm the victim. I know I'm not the victim. And nobody is the victim because it never happened. That's what you say. It's two against one. Admit it. We assaulted you. Oh, what's the use? These are your confessions, girls. Do you stand by them? Yes. Then you couldn't have committed the crime. You state the incident took place near the swimming pool. That's right. Well, your partner claims it happened in the teeter-totter area. The teeter-totter area? <laughs> Carlotta, where did you get that? I forgot what you told me to say. Oh. You're all three guilty of providing false information, which is a very serious offense. Besides making monkeys out of us, you cost the taxpayers a lot of money. Well, I'd be glad to pay you for your time. <laughs> Just get out of here. Just get out of here. All three of you. Well, we're free? But, but about, Where do you, you get off telling us that we're free? Carlotta, he's trying to rob us of our one chance to be famous. Uh, sweetheart, you should have thought of that before you neglected to assault anybody. Come on, Sergeant. <laughs> Nobody got assaulted? Then that Carlotta, means... that means we can still be the first. And all we need is a victim. Carlotta? People versus Christy Mullins. Accused of shooting her unfaithful lover in Sh Sheboygan, I believe it was. That's all over and forgotten. Have you forgotten, Christy? The jury said not guilty. Have I said otherwise? Well, yet if you're accusing one of us, do it. Get it over with. Would you explain me that? You knew what he was planning, yet you stood by and let him... Yes, Nero Fiddle. That's one of my prizes. <laughs> a part of an ingenious infernal machine is created by one uh, Antonio Bedina, a direct descendant of the Medici's. Would you like to see how it works? Oh, no. <laughs> Thank you, anyway. That's well, quite harmless now. I'll squirm along with the guilty tonight, but it's been necessary. And I have... I'm not surprised, Elliot, to find this exhibition in the... I've been working at the insurance office downstairs. You're, uh, you're Miss, um... Bannister. It's right there in the card. 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 Oh, yeah. yeah it's right in the card. Bannister, it's right in the card. Well, uh, sit down, please. Yes, slowly. <laughs> Tell us, Miss Bannister, uh, how is your, uh, uh, typing in your shorthand? Oh, well, my typing's just fair, but my shorthand isn't as good. Oh, well, <clears throat> uh, how, how, how are you at filing? You... 
Um, not too great. But as good as I am at shorthand and typing, <laughs> mostly I've been a receptionist. I'm very good at meeting people. Well, we are aware of the need in industry today for good people meters. <laughs> oh, no, sure. Be glad to. And thank you. We've had a fabulous evening. Yeah, just the beginning. Just the beginning. I know I'm going to get along just great with you and Mr. Archer. Likewise. <laughs> and I really want to be a lot of help to you. So, I guess I'd better get all the sleep I can. Good night now. Hi. Oh, hi. <laughs> Well, how are you uh, feeling today, Penny? I mean, not too exhausted from last night. Oh, no. I was in bed by you. You're agreeable. I am not only agreeable. I am anxious, if you know what I mean. Gee, you and Mr. Eaton are sure wonderful bosses. Yeah, well, don't, don't think of me as a boss. Think of me as a friend. I mean, a very, very good friend. You've been so very nice to me. I only wish there was some way I could thank you. Yeah, well, I'm sure we'll find a way. I hope so. Yeah. I really want to help. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, good night now. Yeah. Here's the Tobias portfolio, sir. Well, we won't need it till tomorrow, Penny. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Well, uh, good morning, Penny. We were wondering how it went last night. Oh, fine. Just fine. Yeah. Well, we were wondering how it went, you know, specifically. Well, Mr. Tobias took me out to dinner, and then he took me dancing, and then he took me home. Yeah, well, uh, tell me, how did he, uh, uh, how did he like your place? Oh, he didn't get inside my apartment any more than you did. Or any more than you did. <laughs> Nothing that suicide won't correct, that will be all. <laughs> Thank you. Honey, this is the studio. See? Da ah, hello, Darb. <clears throat> this is uh, Karen. She's uh, trying out for the new weather girl. Auditioning. <laughs> Likewise. Chicken Little. Very good. At least she's brighter than some of your others. Come on, honey, let's look at the map. And what do these little raindrops mean? I'll go over it again. Uh, Rex, on the late news tonight, I'd better handle the big labor meeting. Well, then I get the Hungarian railway strike. Uh, you can do the grease fire at the bakery. You do those so well. Well, then you throw in the Middle East conflict? No. I'll give you Poland. No. Uh, all right. All right. But I better do Belgium. Then I get Russia and I'm keeping the vice right on the trailer can. I always do vice. I'm the father image. You don't do it this time. Rexy, you are going to take me out to dinner, aren't you? Good idea. You two go on out. Enjoy yourselves. Uh, nothing to hang around here for. Excuse me, but the more fan mail came in for you, Rexy. I mean, Mr. Bickers. I'll just pile up my office with all the rest of it. Hold it. Let me see those. No point. There's nothing for you. Again. Take it away. My, my, you do have a following. Oh, thank you. To Mildred and Harvey, happy anniversary. Thank oh. you. Gee, it's hard to believe you kids have been married for six months. Well, they said it wouldn't last. <laughs> <laughs> In honor of this occasion, Rosie is going to do one of the numbers from her act. Oh, how nice. Oh, I do hope you like it. Ta-da! And her voice is low and sweet. And she is the world to me. And for Bonnie, Annie, Lori, I'd lay me done and dee. Hey, how about that? I bet you've never seen anything like that. Ever in my life. Thank you. My agent's giving me jobs.
jobs in nightclubs as soon as I'm better at dying. You don't have to worry about that. Well, uh, tomorrow's a work day. We'd better get home to bed. Lester, we are not married yet. If we were married, you'd say we'd better get home to bed, sir. <laughs> Very funny. <laughs> oh, thank you. Well, we'll see you soon. Okay. Come on, Rosie, it's getting late. Oh, look. A little black book. Mine is. Uh, uh, that's mine, thanks. Oh. A little black book. I've never seen one of these before. Can I peek? Well, well, go ahead. Uh, Rosie, that little book is Lester's. I don't think you ought to, uh... Oh, look! All the names in this book are girls' names. Why, well, I, uh, I always did like girls. <laughs> and some of the names even have stars after them. Oh? One star, two stars, three stars. It's like a rating, sort of. My guess is that two stars is better than one star. Well, that makes sense. Oh, and then three stars. You mind if I look at it? Why should I mind that? I'll tell you why I mind. Look. Why? Your name's in the book. Well, it better be. <laughs> why shouldn't Rosie's name be in my little book? And with three stars and an exclamation mark. Ooh, he must really care about you. Oh, Lester, three stars and an exclamation mark. <laughs> Wait a minute. You? I just have to see what other girls' names are in this book and how they made out. I mean, how Lester made out. No, I think I mean how they made out. <gasps> oh! Lester! Lester, you bad person! <gasps> What's the matter? Your name is in this book with four stars. You snake in the grass and all this time I thought you were my friend. My name is Huckable. This has gone far enough. There's something that I want to explain. How dare someone like you put someone like me in your book? Are you trying to suggest that my Lester isn't good enough for you? Now you leave my wife alone. Oh, Rosie, baby, do let not me. touch me, you lecher. But I do you have my The book belongs to Harvey. Well, well. And what's my Rosie's name doing in there? With three stars and an exclamation point. An exclamation point. Oh, Harvey. This little black book dates back six months ago, before we were married. And the code? Uh, it, it, I was looking for the ideal girl. I kept score. Of what? Of my reactions. One star meant pretty good. Two stars meant real nice. Three stars meant something special. <laughs> Uh, why burn it here? It has a leatherette cover. It'll just smell up the whole place. I'll burn it at the office. You don't have a fireplace at the office. Well, let me burn it for you. I happen to have an, an incinerator in my house. Burn it, Harvey, now. get into a bathroom than out of a costume. Bobby, I need help. Ah, oh, who doesn't, Joe? I've got a client that was once an actress. Yeah? Tell me, tell me. She famous? Not exactly. She made a film once, in color. Blue. Whoa, skin flick. They're all over town, Joe. Yeah, and the guy she made it for is willing to sell it for five grand, and she's willing to pay. Why? Is she having her own film festival or something? Oh, the guy she's married to is about to become the head of a big university. Aha. Uh -huh. 
So she did all right for herself, huh? Apparently, the guy she made this film for has been in the business at least 13 years. And my guess is he's still in action. Hey, Joe, some of these guys have been around a long, long time. With uh, blackmail as a little sideline? You're right. That is a little bit illegitimate. Now, uh, 13 years, blackmail and blue movies. I'd say that this guy's got to be living pretty high, right, Bobby? I mean, he ought to be a real fat cat. For sure. Okay, let me think. It's not Manny. No. Gypso. Who? Gypso Martin. I did a quickie for him once. You know what I got? A bum check. But the guy really spends, Joe. Spends much more than he makes producing movies. Oh, uh, you're sure about this blackmail? This is not a nice man, Joe. He would squeeze the last nickel out of his own dead mother. And uh, where would I find this Mr. Martin? Uptown, when he's home. But usually he's at a trap he calls a studio. Which is where? Yeah, fresh air gives you a great chest. And there it is. <laughs> It's a great way to start the day, and not a bad way to end it either. Watch it. There's a motion that affects every muscle in your body. Here's the motion. Here's a motion that affects a muscle, your throat muscle, because you keep shouting, Oh, boy, yeah -ha! You're looking at Sedell, a graduate of one of our Jack Lestrain spas. Which of my gyms did you go to, dear? Hollywood Hills. I should have known. The hills have always been my favorite area. What about the, what about the valley? I like the valley, too. Yes. I was a good student. I graduated in the front of my class. Well, that's the safest place for everybody concerned. Sidell, I imagine you've learned quite a few exercises at my spa. Yes, I have. You jog? Yes, I do. <laughs> Would you jog for me? Huh? Would you jog now? I'll give you anything. A free exercise mat, anything. A pipe. Actually, I jog in place. Would you like to jog at my place? Lovely girl. You see, folks, I take a personal interest in each of my students, because I'm in the business of making people feel better. And if that doesn't make you feel better, you're dead. This girl is a picture of perfect health. She follows the Jack Lestrain formula. She exercises well, she lives well, and she eats well, don't you? Yes, I love my granolas. We all do, my dear. You certainly have a magnificent shape, and I'm sure you have deceptive strength. In fact, I'll bet you're as strong as I am. And no one is as strong as Jack Lestrain. Well, why don't you have... Why don't we have a tug of war, and let's see. Let's do it. You probably are stronger than you think. Oh. Are you ready? As hard as you can. <clears throat> You're losing. Well, you lose a couple, you win a couple. You know, my boyfriend is not going to like this. Your boyfriend? Does he have a great build? He doesn't need one. He's got a great personality. Oh, I'd like to meet him. <laughs> Sketch earlier. She's our resident matinee oh, lady, and she's going to be seen in the new NBC series, The Girl with Something Extra, which is probably one of the great understatements <laughs> of the century. Would you welcome Carol Wayne? How are you? <laughs> I think every year. You've, you've, you've been with us on our anniversary, right? You were here last year when the Governor Reagan was here and I everybody. Was indeed. Yeah. Where was I 11 years ago? Yeah, where were you 11 years ago? In high doing? school. <laughs> you were in high school. <laughs> that, really, that really puts it in perspective, you know? You were yeah, in high right. school. Uh, yeah. You know when I started the show and I always think about? My oldest son, who is now through college and has been out of college for two years, was in the seventh grade, was, go, was entering junior high school. He's finished high school and had four years of college, and it's been, it's been out two years. That's kind of, and you were in high school. You're old. <laughs> That's well, it's scary. all relative. Yes. You know, you're going to be 47 someday. Oh, I hope so. You are now, as a matter of fact. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> but you will. Does, does that bother you to think that someday you'll grow old? No, but I'm wondering what I'll do. I don't think I'll get character parts, do you? <laughs> <laughs> no, but you, you still look like you're, you're 
a teenager in 1920, something in there. <laughs> I know you're a little older than that. Yeah. Because if you were in high school 11 years ago, you have to be a little older than that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right? What a detective. <laughs> That's right. I, I know it would have been great. I had Aunt found Shelf. Aunt running out of running out of questions and answers after I only have two questions left after 11 years on this show, and I, I want to save them for the last so two years. So why you're a millionaire? What do you work? <laughs> um, has this show been a help to you? That <laughs> was a good one. Thank you. That's one of them I hadn't used. Yes. Has this helped your career? Oh yes, I'm famous. As the matinee lady. Yeah. Yeah. People recognize you when they. Oh, ask me for autographs and everything. Do they really? Yeah. That's good. You have something to, in, a, in a, a roundabout way. You never, you ever meet Bird before? No, but I'm good friends with your ex-wife. <laughs> well, uh, the host uh, blundered right in there, didn't he? Uh, I was just trying to get a little something going. I didn't know it was going to go in that direction. Also, my collection was in his movie part. Your collection was in his movie part? Yeah. In the part of his movie. Mm -hmm. Oh, you know what she's talking about? No, they... I, I'd, I'd like to, though. <laughs> she and her husband have Indian artifacts. Yes, really? And, and they were the credits for the man who left here. <coughs> oh, they oh, were really? beautiful. Oh, yeah. Yes. Then, I, then I handled your props. Yes. <laughs> You know, I'd give a million dollars for just a straight man. One somewhere. That's not a... What? Oh, I did. I missed it. I see. Well, God, I didn't know that was there. I just found it. I you? certainly hope so. Uh, you were, um, you were, you were on the, the competing station the other day, somebody told me, or some time ago? Doing yes, I did the weather for Channel 7. You were the weather girl? I had two fronts. I had a cold All right. Uh, <laughs> I bet you don't know graphically the difference. I don't know graphically between what? A cold front and a hot front. Well, what's the hot front has little bumps on the thing, and the cold front has big points. You know about isobars and all that? No, but it was raining on my husband's ex-wife in New York. <laughs> I seem to be gradually just falling apart here. In the Everybody's talking, everybody else. Hackett is Hackett's wiped out on the floor. This is strange. I'll be right back. I, I must do this for another 11 years. Once in life. So you might as well grab as much gusto as you can. <laughs> you see, baby, I'm the captain of the ship. And from now on, not a thing can come between us. This is Miss Carol Wayne, who is filling in for a... Uh, Carol is, Carol is uh, filling in us bed shoes. Uh, did you know that Carol has to send her sweaters to obedience school? You, you do that, huh? It's nice to see you. You look, you look very pretty tonight. Thank you. What accident? <laughs> I'll, I'll talk to you about it a little later if you want to. I I'd a, like that. I had a strange thing that happened to me, and that's why I haven't been here. Didn't you, didn't you know about that? I never watch the show when you're not on, sweetheart. Oh, I'll tell you how bad it was at the hospital. I've got to watch her. Uh, how what? bad was it? <laughs> Did that come out of her? Your voice is changing, right? The middle of the show. Once, how did they do it? So the other thing is all stretched out, and the other thing is all punched in. You had that both, huh? Yes. Yeah. You were on that slant board all by yourself, you say? 
<laughs> well, if it... Wow, you mean you can't feel me and I could feel you. <laughs> oh, yeah, you're a murderer. Well, no, if I go like this. Yeah. <laughs> I feel I'm serious it. now. I, I, can, I can barely feel that. Oh. You see, but if I do this. Yeah. <laughs> I'm an animal. No, but you know what I mean? Yeah. So I, I figured, and, and I get so bored sitting around, because I'd like to... How that. rude for a jock-type person like yourself to have your machinery collapse under you <laughs> while improving a physical shape that was already perfect. You certainly have a way with words, don't you? <laughs> and a way with other things, too. That's, a, that's an Indian outfit, isn't it? Because I know you and your hubby um, at one time had a lot of Indian artifacts and, and jewelry and had a, a showing at one time, didn't yeah. you? Is that some, in your line, or, I mean, is that some of the things that you have? No. Oh, it's not? No. This is new. Uh-huh. Is, that, but... is it real Indian? No, it's real leather. No, I mean, is it... <laughs> then it's really me. It's going to yeah. be a long night. I know it's all you, uh, but, I mean, is this... Carthesia, I have to go very slow with me the first night, Carol. Yeah. Is this from a particular tribe or an Indian nation? I mean... No, it's um, contemporary New York. Well, they used to have Indians in New York, isn't sure. they? Sure. Yeah, Winnebago. Well, that's a camper. Well, well, that's probably Indian where they got, India, that's where they got the name. Yeah. But I thought these were a particular Indian, uh, like Navajo or something like that. Nope. What have you been doing since what I've seen I you? What have I been doing? Um, I'm on a new game show. In the, how come you don't watch oh. me and you watch Dialing for Dollars? I want to tell you, I did see a lot. And We're funny. We're celebrities. We're six celebrities who get no, what's that? What's that show? I celebrity Sweepstakes. Oh, yeah, I've heard of that. I didn't, yes. I didn't see that. My high school education has not gotten in my way. I'm smart. <laughs> really? Well, I know that. What, the, what was the idea? Well, um, they ask you a question and then you write it down. Now, sometimes when they ask you, your brain says, I know that. And when you go to write it down, what is dining El Fresca? I said, I know that. But when I wrote it down, I said, it's eating chicken in the nude. I mean, I didn't know what it was. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. You do that all the time? That show regular now? Yeah. Well, I'll watch that. Oh, I good. haven't seen that one. But boy, they got some. They've got one show, and I'm not going to mention the name of it. There is no game. Clarence Darrow once said, if your parents ruin your first part of your life, what ruins the second part of your life? Did Clarence Darrow say that? Well, fill in the blank. <laughs> See, I said your accountant. Your now, accountant yes. spoils the second part of your life. That was wrong. It's having children of your own. How rude he was. But I knew the only president for, um, buried in Washington, D.C. Guess who that is? Millard Fillmore? No. Nobody knows where poor Millard is born. <laughs> buried. Or buried. Yeah. Or where he was born. Uh, who's the only president buried in Washington, D.C.? You don't know, do you? See, the lady would have lost all of her money. I know it was Woodrow Wilson. Why is he the only president buried in Washington? because all the rest of them are in Virginia or scattered throughout the nation. We're pretty good on that. We are indeed. And are going to do a tea time movie tonight. Yes. And here she is now, our matinee lady. She is just one of the thousands of people whose marriage was helped by the Masters and Yutzman Clinic. <laughs> Masters and Yutzman Marriage Clinic. Tell us, matinee lady, how was it? Well, I just loved Masters, but hated Yutzman. Yes. I've heard Yutzman's gang therapy is a little rough, but we'll get back to that. <laughs> Friends, Masters and Yutzman's Marriage Clinic will bring back the magic of your honeymoon through this. A recording of your wife crying in a bathroom. Our skilled counselors can patch up any marital problem. Ladies, no longer will your husband take five days to drive home the babysitter. <laughs> and men, and men, no longer will your wife sew up the slits in your pajamas. You just come <laughs> to the masters and the x -Men. I'm telling you. That's right, friends. You come to the masters and the x -Men clinic and never again will your anniversary be celebrated with gunfire. You'll be in good hands with our skilled counselors. That's for sure. Our counselors can solve any marriage problem because they've all been married six or seven times. 
And each of our counselors is an expert in his field. In fact, many of them have been arrested in a field. <laughs> Friends, do you have a sex problem? Do you have a sex problem that needs straightening out? I've never had a sex problem I couldn't straighten out. I'm hip. <laughs> Friends, at Masters in the Yachtman, we have the latest techniques. Men, impotence your problem. Well, ladies, don't worry. We've got a guy named Eddie who isn't. He sure isn't. No, enough about Eddie. At Masters in the Yachtman, we start out by teaching with the art of touching, by putting you in one of our encounter groups. And if you encounter what they have, we also have shots that'll take care of that. <laughs> you will learn, friends. You'll learn our sexual techniques and guaranteed privacy. Just you, your counselor, and the film crew behind the two-way mirror. <laughs> and don't worry, only you and your counselor will ever see the film. But if you don't pay us, an Elks Club in Glendale will see it. <laughs> Mine was showing twice. Yes, I hear it was. They broke their antlers. Friends, <laughs> at Masters and Yutzman, we'll show you how to put the excitement back in your marriage. You've heard of magic fingers? Well, each of our beds has five magic fingers, which makes one magic fist. Ladies, <laughs> we'll show you... We'll show you how to excite your husband with things like this. Ooh. An oyster-studded negligee. We'll give you... That's right, friends. You can't, they can't all be winners. We'll give, you, we'll give you helpful hints for making your bedroom more sensual like this rear view mirror for your bedpost. <laughs> and friends, you'll also receive the following books. I'm okay, you're okay, but the guy in the wetsuit isn't. <laughs> Everything you've always wanted to know about harnesses, a biggie. <laughs> How batteries saved our marriage. Yes, friends, I want to tell you... Remember, friends, if your marriage is on the rocks, comes to Masters and Yutzman Marriage Clinic. How do you get there, you ask? You take the San Diego Freeway to the Ventura Freeway <laughs> to the Slauson Cutoff. Get out of your car, cut off your Slauson, get back in your car, <laughs> and drive four miles until you see a giant neon cordless novelty item. And now back to our flick. <laughs> the Jackson Five, the Four Tops, the Three Stooges, the Double Mitt Twins, and Furball, the Wonder Cat, and Tarzan breaks his loincloth. <laughs> Oh, are we back already? Well, there was another big film, friends. Rhonda Fleming, Peggy Fleming, Art Fleming, Myron Cohn, and Squirt, the Wonder Clam. In the Planet of the Apes gets a synagogue. But first, friends, let me ask you this question. Has crime got you down? Are you tired of being mugged, molested, and bullied? Do you have to buy wallets by the case? Do your ears ring with the words, step back, give him some air? In bars, are you sick of combing glass out of your hair? Can you remember the last time your jaws weren't wired? Do you find yourself viewing the world through a hole in an ace bandage? Then it's time to enroll in our school of martial arts founded by two guys named Marshall and Art. I love Marshall, hated Art. Yes, friends, at the University of Kung Fu, or as we call it, Kung Fu Yu. Yes, friends. And at Kung Fu Yu, you'll take such courses as elementary screaming, intermediate groin clutching, and advanced bruises and welts. Your heart will swell with pride, and your hands will swell with calluses, as our bank account swells with money. I know all about swelling. I know. When you start our course... Friends, when you start our course, here's the way your hand will look, and here is how it will look when we are through. How about that? Give the band a nice hand. Friends... We'll teach you to be like David Carradine to convince your fellow man the importance of peace, brotherhood, and nonviolence. Then after he's convinced, you can take a ball, peen, hammer, and cold cock him. Yes. <laughs> At Kung Fu Yu, we'll teach you the lotus position. I don't know that one. Yutzman didn't get to that. Huh? I'll show it to you later. <laughs> Friends at Kung Fu Yu, we'll teach you how to make every part of your body a deadly weapon. Every part? That's right. We'll teach you how to terrorize an entire community with your feet. And I don't mean by not changing your socks. Friends... <laughs> At Kung Fu, you'll learn how to chop, stomp, bust, cut, dice, puree, mince, and shred. You'll turn your attacker into a salad. <laughs> At Kung Fu, you, friends, we'll teach you what to do if a man with a gun tries to mug you. What do you do? You turn over your money, dumb. You could get killed. <laughs> so come to Kung Fu, you, friends, where you'll earn your green belt. Yes, you can earn a brown belt. You can earn a black belt. And for you senior citizens, you can earn your black trust. Now, here's how you get... It. Here's how you get to Kung Fu, you. You take the Golden State Freeway... Until you come to a golden state. You turn on this freeway, take a left on another freeway until you come to... The fork, the fork in the road. That's right. <laughs> That's right, friends. 
and you follow the trail of broken bricks. Now back to our flick, Mickey Rooney, Mickey Spillane, Mickey Mouse, Mickey Madeline, yawn, the wonder sloth, and Andy Hardy gets a rubber sheet. Oh, are we back already? That was another film, Biggie, friends. Douglas Fairbanks Jr., Junior Gilliam, Stu Gilliam, Stu Irwin, and Irwin Corey, and Spurt the Wonder Skunk in Gidget Takes on Fort Ord. But first, friends... <laughs> friends, another big bargain for you. You do have trouble finding clothes that fit. Are you tall, portly, or extra large? I'm extra large. I know. <laughs> are you squat, dumpy, slousy, sleazy, or slovenly? Is your neck size larger than your waist? Are you the tired of the, being the kind of person who can't get a new suit unless a freak dies? <laughs> Has your body ever been picked up on the radar? Are you hard to fit, hard to please, hard to look at? I'm hard to fit. You're not hard to look at. Wherever, whatever your clothing problems, friends, bring it to Suck It In City. Yes, friends. <laughs> That's right, friends. At Suck It In City, you won't be embarrassed by your clothing problem any longer. We can't alter a suit to fit you. We have a plastic surgeon who will alter you to fit the suit. <laughs> They have to do that with me. I all know the time. they do. Now, folks, let's look at this vast selection right over here of fine styles and clothes for the hard to fit that you'll find at Suck It In City. Some real bargains here, friends. Here they are, right off the rack. Here's a handsome pair of slacks left over, left over from our long John Silver sale. Some of you remember that. But friends, the ape look is back. <laughs> Believe me. Believe me, friends, you wouldn't want to meet the guy who tried this one on. And only at Suck It In City, the man with double vision, pants, the two zip That's right. For the very portly, a Cross Your Heart t-shirt. As you can see, our customers are not only hard to fit, they're a little weird, too. Here's a stylish garment for the man with something extra. For the man who's really on the go. And here's a real value, friends. A suit that's 50% off. Yes. Now, friends, if you come to Suck It In City, you'll receive absolutely free of charge this pair of calendar shorts. So you'll know when you've had them on for a month. Now, that's it, Suck In The City. I suck It In City. Now, take it. How do you get there, you ask? Now, friends, you take the Ventura Freeway to the Pasadena off ramp to the Harbor Freeway until you come to. The spoon. No, the spoon in the road. Oh, two Timmy's tried to out guess Art Fern. Well, that's all the time we have for you today. So tune in tomorrow, friends, for another feature film. Biggie Jack, Lemon Jack, Haley, Haley Mills, the Mills Brothers, Dr. Joyce Brothers, and Spawn the Wonder Carp, and Dracula gets bombed on a wino. Bye now. <laughs> I don't want to have a scratch out here tonight. Uh, wh why is that? I don't want anything to lick me that's not going to marry me. <laughs> <laughs>
give us your blank check and your blank mind, and we will do the rest. I went into a trance once. Let me know when you come out of it. Guru, you. You will learn the chant that makes the complete human being. Ying, 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 yang. Peace and harmony. Love and serenity. A lot of sex, a little obscenity. Who could ask for anything more? <laughs> Friends, Guru Yu is having a special for the first hundred people who enroll tonight. Look what you get, friends. A large navel to contemplate. <laughs> you can have an innie or an outie, the belly button of your choice. And it comes complete with a ball of lint, of course. <laughs> a pastrami sandwich to avoid hunger during meditation. Sit on this, friends. You're only supposed to go into trance for 20 minutes. If you stay in a trance overnight, we give you this tubin, turban, or tubin, with a rooster in it. No good. For those of you searching... <laughs> friends, for those of you searching for real tranquility, we offer you this life-size Howard Cosell hostility doll. <laughs> That feels good. I know something that feels uh, good. You're right on, Matt and Ada lady. Now back to our flick. Wallace Beery, Timothy Leary, Ralph Martiri, Blossom Deary, Dear Abby, Abby Lena, starring Bessie, the Wonder Barracuda, in Sam Goldwyn's Bimbos of 1936. <laughs> oh, we're back already. That was another film masterpiece. Jack Lemon, Meadowlark Lemon, Betty Davis, Ch Police Chief Davis, Ned Beatty, Warren Beatty, Clyde Beatty, Andy Clyde, and Wacko, the crazed woodpecker. <laughs> in Tammy Turns Professional. But first, friends, friends, let me ask you this question. Are you tired of staying at home on Saturday nights counting the socks in your drawer? Is the highlight of your week scraping mud off your shoes? Are you at a stay at home and never takes a vacation? Is the closest you've been to a foreign country, the Italian box boy at Safeway who made eyes at you? <laughs> then it's time you took a charter vacation flight. Join our exclusive Charter Airline Club Crooks Tours. <laughs> Friends, take the 21-day Crooks Tours around the world. I'd love to go around the world. Wouldn't take you 21 days either. Friends, <laughs> get away from it all for a day, a week, a month on Fat Chance Airlines. Fly Fat Chance Airlines. It might be forever. On Crooks Tours, you'll fly to countries where the average tourists never visit because most of the countries we fly to are at war. <laughs> Want to go to the Far East? We have a package that only costs $34 for two weeks. How can we do it so cheap? Because we're a non-scheduled airline and we fly by night. As a matter of fact, our whole operation is fly by night. <laughs> this is a scale model of our plane, a DC six and three quarters. <laughs> we fly on a wing and a prayer. We supply the wing, you bring the prayer. <laughs> Mask? No, we leave the windows open, dear. But in case of a tailspin, a compartment above you will open and a rabbit's foot will drop down. Our rabbit's feet lucky? What? Our rabbit's feet lucky? Only if the rabbit lives. You'll fly, friends, 18 hours straight without a meal. We have provided a glass door in the cockpit so you can watch what the pilots eat, though. I'd love to look into a cockpit. I guess you would. <laughs> Hear me, friends. Hear me on, on our charter plane. <laughs> friends. <laughs> friends, listen to me. <laughs> That's right, friends. On our charter plane, <laughs> you fly cheaper than no frills. You fly no lavatory. <laughs> Our passengers simply step into a giant baggie. <laughs> and there are no seats. Our stewardesses nail your shoes to the floor. <laughs> and what happens after you land? If you land, you have two weeks of adventure waiting, you friends. Our agent will hand you the keys to a brand new car, and while you're starting the car, our agent will distract the car's owner. <laughs> You'll be staying in our specially selected hotels, price quoted based on double occupancy, you and the bellhop. Yes, friends, first to Hawaii. In Hawaii, our steward Raul will show you things you never dreamed could be done with a pineapple. <laughs> Raul gave me something in Hawaii. Don't give it to me. In beautiful Hawaii... <laughs> Friends, in beautiful Hawaii, you'll be met at the airport by a native girl in a grass skirt. If you sell for 20 bucks, she'll let you smoke it. You'll sample... <laughs> you'll sample the native food, poi, which got its name when the first Hawaiian ate it and said, 
you'll see Don Ho perform in person. And you'll get to ask him, hey, don't you know anything except Hawaiian wedding song? <laughs> you'll get to meet Hawaiian men and ask them why they wear loud shirts. After the short stop in Hawaii, your, your plane taxis over to where they film Hawaii Five-O, refuels by squeezing oil from a clump of Jack Lord's hair. Then, friends, <laughs> Fat Chance Airlines flies you on to its second stop, Japan. <laughs> Man. Japan. We don't care where we go, but Japan, the land where the sun rises and the daughters lie down. France, half the things, half the things in this country were made in Japan. I wasn't made in Japan. And oversight soon to be corrected. <laughs> See the marvels, friends, of Japanese science. A transistor office building. <laughs> you can buy a Samari sword like this. I was once offered $1,000 by a rabbi for this one. Then, friends, it's on to, yes, India. In India, you can watch 10 million people go to work in diapers. You can watch an Indian snake charmer. Yes, friends, an authentic Indian snake charmer. <laughs> a rabbit wrong trick. Rabbits have a hobby that's your hobby. India, mysterious. <laughs> mysterious Calcutta and Bombay. Yes, friends, there'll be plenty of begging in the streets, and you'll be doing the begging on our tours. We do not provide food. <laughs> to give you the true feeling of India in your hotel room, you'll sleep on a bed of nails, or for $50 extra, a bed of Natasha, the girl who lives down the hall. <laughs> Next, friends, Cook Tours wish you off to your last stop. Beautiful Africa. Dark, mysterious Africa. On our flight, we have no movies but our steward, Raoul, will act out an army training film. I was in one of those. I think I caught it. You'll land in an area, you'll land in an area where tourists rarely visit because there are no airports. The plane circles the jungle and drops you in a clearing. Deepest Africa, where you'll hear authentic African sounds of birds singing, brooks bubbling, and tourists getting gored by a rhinoceros. <laughs> and loving it. Then, then a trip to a small village where you'll play crack the whip with 50 pygmies. After, friends, you will be shown the art of using a blowgun. Oh, so that's what a blowgun is. <laughs> friends. <laughs> friends, now we'd like to show you one of our club members who recently returned from Africa. <laughs> The poor devil made the mistake of telling a band of pygmies they look like Mickey Rooney's ex-wives. <laughs> this man is now Howard Johnson's flavor of the week, wrinkled raisin. During your tour, during your tour of Africa, friends, you will be given your own pit helmet, which will protect you from coconuts, rude monkeys, and tourists committing suicide by jumping out of trees. When your plane returns to Los Angeles, your guide will tell you when it's safe to remove your helmets. He'll say, okay, everyone, pits off. So stop. So stop by. So stop by the local office where we make it easy for you to go. We got no passport, we don't care. Got no luggage, we don't care. Don't expect to pay us, that's when we care. Crooks to us, drive four miles to our giant revolving neon trousers, the hand reaching into the back pocket. I just love to travel. Here's my key to the camper, friends. Now back to our flick, Aldo Ray, Martha Ray, Ina Ray Hutton, Jim Hutton, E.E. E. Hutton, Red Buttons, and Amazo and his trained intestine. <laughs> In the day President Taft set on Philadelphia. Bye now. As you know, our Matt Navy, would you welcome Carol Wayne? Anticlimactic and it's so early. Well, you're not anticlimactic because you were actually on first tonight. That's very true. You see, you were out here before. That's right. Yeah. See, this is really not like a guest shot for you anymore because you are uh, big on celebrity sweepstakes. Every I day. am. Yeah. I'm a daytime star. I just see you on there. Uh, you answer. Who would have guessed? You answer a lot of questions too. Sure. I notice the odds are very low on, on 
Tu as dit, 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 tu as This is this is for for fun. All right. Okay. In what sport are you most likely to have a tight end? Football. Oh, you see, I said bullfighting. You can look bad in those costumes. Oh, I see. I see. When a woman recites the Pledge of Allegiance, where is she supposed to put her hand? I suppose over her heart. Oh. I said it depends who she's pledging allegiance to. I never, my mind doesn't work that way. A man in the Navy may do something with his left hand only if his right hand is engaged in an activity from which it cannot be easily disengaged. What may he do with his left hand? I wouldn't touch that line with a fork. I suppose salute. Salute. I said pro polish his brass. Well, I suppose that could be acceptable. I'm On sorry. your 25th anniversary, it's silver. <laughs> On your 50th, it's gold. You've never made it, I know. That's true. What, what should you expect on your, on your 75th wedding anniversary? Death. <laughs> 75th is diamonds. Wow. I thought it was rubber sheets. <laughs> You're weird. You're yeah. weird. Is 75th diamond? I don't know. I just had to guess. You're, think... you're smart. Is it diamond? Yes. Yeah. Yes. You ever been stumped by a question? Of course. I yes. imagine you do. Can't sure. The What's the longest bone in your body? I said. I don't know. I think they're going to turn this show into a training film. <laughs> you know, and. What is the longest bone in your body? I suppose your your thigh, your bone. thigh bone, yeah. which is connected to the knee bone, <laughs> connected to the ankle bone, connected to the foot bone, connected to the toe bone. <laughs>
potion has done wonders for me. You said a handful, and here's what... Here, friends, is what this lotion looks like. It's easy to apply. You just take it out of your jugs and put it on, put it on our jugs. You do, you do whatever you want to with it. And men, let us not forget you. Compared to you, is Marty Allen starting to look good? Is it difficult to hold your head up because of the weight of your dandruff? Are you gross and overweight? Are you men worried about losing your hair? Toupees don't fool anyone, and hair transplants are too expensive. Elena Frankenstein will give you the ultimate transplant, a plant transplant. We spend you a special shampoo made from grass seed and fertilizer. Here is a photo of one of our customers before his plant transplant. And here he is a full three weeks later with a full head of leaves. No more trips to the barber. Once a week you water, once a year you rake. You'll know when autumn is coming by looking in your bathroom mirror. Men send for the latest thing in home beauty and grooming. The the, the, the Fix Your Head First Kit. That's right, friend. This kit comes with a set of combs. We cater to your personal needs. Here's a comb for left-handed persons. A comb for right-handed persons. We also have a new Telly Savalas model comb. Here is the Alice Cooper model for people who haven't combed their hair since 1948. Here's our comb for people with a heavy dandruff problem. And now back to our movie starring Harry James, Art James, Jesse James, James Dean, Dean Jones, January Jones, and Pecker the Wonder Bird in our double feature, Laverne and Shirley Get a Cramp, and King Kong Fertilizes Kansas. We'll be right back, friends. Oh, we're back already. Friends, let me ask you this question. Is your furniture old and shabby? When company drops in, do you throw a sheet over your sofa and claim you're painting the house? Does your dog refuse to jump on your favorite chair because he's afraid of getting his paws dirty? Are your chairs breaking up to a point where you're finding splinters in your preparation H? Then you, by all means, should drop by California's leading discount furniture warehouse, Tacky City. That's right, friends, at Tacky City, you'll find 200,000 square feet filled to the rafters with furniture. Why do we have so much furniture stocked in our warehouse? Because the fire didn't come off as planned, friends. <laughs> this is our huge showroom where you'll see living room, dinette, and bedroom pieces. And speaking of bedrooms, our furniture, like the matinee lady, is fully upholstered. Would anyone like to see us watch? At Tacky City, you choose from a wide variety of room settings. You tired of French provincial and Italian provincial, then try our German provincial. Instead of sitting on a chair, you squat on a helmet, friends. <laughs> Are you forced to cut your food budget so when you sit down at your dining room set there's nothing to eat? Well, you'll always have something to eat when you sit at our dinette set, because our dinette set is completely edible, friends. $200 for nothing. <laughs> friends! <laughs> friends, how about a coffee beanbag chair? There you are, a coffee beanbag chair. Don't sit too long, friends, or else your fanny will be awake all night. <laughs> Tacky City, courtesy is our password. We'll sell you at 40% off. How can we do this? Because we cut out the middleman and deal directly with the fence. <laughs> we have a full line of clocks, wall clocks, floor clocks, ceiling clocks. We specialize in grandfather clocks. You can have a cuckoo clock with a bird in or out. And that goes for your grandfather, too. Folks, do your decorating at Tacky City. Even if you're evicted, you'll own the kind of furniture you'll be proud to have on the street. You can see our complete line of furniture with every price clearly marked in the catalog. They could go through my brochures. Everyone's been through your brochures. Could you use a large chest, friends? I could use a large chest. You could use a set of curb feelers for the one you've already got, friends. <laughs> we have beds. I'm growing old before my eyes here. <laughs> We have beds in all sizes, regular twin, double and queen. We have a queen sardine. I got caught in the net once at a fisherman's convention. Your whole life sounds fishy to me. Anyway, friends, visit our special antique section. Here's our antique chair, sale of the week. This chair is so old, it was made before they invented chair legs. <laughs> oh, boy. The Versailles room you ought to be here. Is a lovely Daniel Boone Ottoman. <laughs> if you act right now, I'm so tired. We will give you friends. <laughs>
<laughs> That's right, friends. At Crown Mountainside, we don't think about mountains until the matinee lady comes around. <laughs> Hello there, my dear. Hello. Does Trans Mountain Slide Airlines have a slogan? That's Trans Mountain Side. Oh, some slide. Yes, they do have a slogan. Fly Trans Mountain Side. We break our tail for you. I knew it was in there. Something to do with your tail. Yes, and now you know where to find me. On Trans Mountain Side, we don't go, friends, to those crowded cities. We go to the clear country fields because that's where we have to land, in country fields. We don't have those long lines of customs. In fields, there are no customs. In my whole life, I have never smuggled anything through customs. Now would you know, friends... <laughs> friends, we don't take you to those ordinary... We don't take you to those ordinary corny tourist attractions. We take you to see the changing of the guards, but not in front of the palace. We take you to their locker room and let you see the changing of the guards' underwear. <laughs> We don't take you to the Bolshoi Ballet, but we'll take you to a ballet that'll make you want to holler, Bolshoi! <laughs> That's right. Yes, friends, we'll go to the Berlin Wall where we're staging a celebrity handball tournament. <laughs> and you'll be thrilled in Germany when we make a rest stop and you can change the color of the Blue Danube. <laughs> and friends, that's right. Friends, and we'll buzz, we buzz the low countries. Why? Because the countries we take you to are the lowest. <laughs> and we'll show you two of the seven hills of Rome. Are there seven hills of Rome? Not when you are there. <laughs> we'll take you to a youth hostel where you'll meet some hostile youth. We won't be corny and take you to Beethoven's birthplace. We will take you to Beethoven's ear doctor's birthplace <laughs> and show you why Beethoven's favorite word was, huh? <laughs> and friends, Here's a little tip to you bachelors. Bring candy and silk stockings. They still work. For what? I'll tell you later. Friends fly. Trans Mountainside Airlines, where you fly now, and you pay during the flight home, or we don't land. <laughs> yes, you can pick up our tickets at our office here in town. How do you get there, you ask? You take the Ventura Freeway. <laughs> this freeway. Change to this freeway. Come to the Slauson Cutoff. Stop the car. Cut off your Slauson. That's right. <laughs> Get back in the car, get back in the car, and look for the firemen sifting through the wreckage of Trans Mountainside Airlines. <laughs> now back to our flick. Richard Lou, Anita Lou, Lou Ayers, Lou Rawls, and Sheep the Wonder Cat in the Four Horsemen Break a Cheerleader's Pom Pom. <laughs> oh, we're back already. That was a beauty. J. Arthur Rank, J. Fred Mux, H. Arnhold Smith, L. Patrick Gray, and the Morbin Tabernacle Choir, and the Wolfman gets a vasectomy. But first, friends. <laughs> friends, are you grossly overweight? Are you taller lying down than standing up? Are you so fat you have to be airlifted out of bed? When you're alone, are you arrested for unlawful assembly? Are you so fat you have to put shock absorbers on your toilet seat? Friends... My friends... We have the answer. Come to Camp Lardaway. Yes, at Camp Lardaway, you lose weight because to kill appetites, we show you the exorcist before a meal. And our food stinks. We only serve food Yule Gibbons has rejected. We provide each camper with a t-shirt and a tent, which are one and the same. Movies are shown on a camper's stomach. At Camp Lardaway, only one camper fits in the lake at one time, but a second camper may be the raft. I've never seen a person be used as a raft. You will later. Yes, friends. <laughs> We rough it. We take you out of camp on a pulley from a helicopter and drop you in the woods, and we charbroil a hamburger, and we see if you can smell your way back to camp. <laughs> and while in the woods, friends, you can learn from the animals. Think of it. When have you seen a pudgy deer or a fat fox? <laughs> eat like they do. Chase down a rabbit and eat the carcass. The only bad side effect from this is rabbit breath. I once killed a rabbit. I beg your pardon? I once killed a rabbit. I'm hip at Camp Lardaway, friends. <laughs> We have sports like sweating, crying for food, and the pudgy fool game where you sit around and guess each other's sex. But don't... That's right, friends. That is true. That's fat. But don't you do anything nice to them? I'd like to do something nice to you. Friends, if you're good, if you're good, we give you a treat. We let you feel mayonnaise. Oh, you're... I love that. Yes, of course you do. If you're bad, we make you write 500 times on the blackboard. I have a defective thyroid gland. I don't know that gland. Never mind, as long as you know the rest of them. Now, fatties, at Camp Lardaway, we put on a show and sing songs like Roll Out My Sister, the bunkhouse song, 
Big Arnold keeps falling on my head, and if he ain't heavy, he ain't my brother. Fat people sound cute. I can't wait, wait to meet one. Well, be careful, my dear. If a fat man gets a crush on you, he gets a crush on you. Friends, we're looking for sad fatties. If someone has to come up to you and ask, where's your bike, and you answer, I'm sitting on it, <laughs> we want you. Camp Lardaway, how do you get there? I hear someone ask. Well, what you do? You take the harbor freeway to any harbor. Take a left at one freeway onto another freeway until you come to the fork in the road. That's right, friends. You keep going up any mountain until you come to Camp Lardaway. Now back to our flick. Robert Stack, Roberta Flack, Jesse White, and Karen Black, and King Arthur hurts himself on a chastity belt. And here's our mad night lady to show you why you should invent something. Just take a look at some of these inventions we have marketed. Thank you, matinee lady. Oh, for willing this off? No, for letting me frisk you beforehand. Hmm. Did you find anything? More than I or a dozen sailors can handle. Now see this, friends. These are some of the inventions Shaft U Corporation has put on the market. What is this, you ask? A miniature tarpaulin you can roll down over your toupee if it rains. <laughs> Here, friends, another invention from Shaft U Corporation. What is this, you ask? Well, these are holsters for spray perspiration protection. <laughs> Fit under your shirt, and any time you need it, you just flap your arms, and poof, you smell like a flower shop. You just go. No, not you. You'll snap something. Now, how about this one, friends? What do we have here? Yes, a burglar alarm for pantyhose. <laughs> and here, friends, is the off switch in case you run into a friend. I, I don't wear any. I beg your pardon. I don't wear. Then pantyhose. put the alarm wherever you wish, friends. Another big invention, curb feelers for your shoes, especially for drunks. <laughs> Here we have a great item, friends, to wear on free beer night in Cleveland. <laughs> That's right, a cat pistol. Very good if you're playing center field. And here, friends, is my favorite invention, non-skid cheese. <laughs> and here, friends, another fantastic unusual invention. <laughs> Fantastic invention, friends, an iron lung for goldfish. <laughs> and here, one of the more fantastic products. This can cure 250,000 cases of hemorrhoids in one second. That's right, Preparation H-Bomb. Now, friends, <laughs> another success story. A raincoat with aluminum foil for flashers who want to tan. <laughs> friends, for all of you who want to tan for Harpsire, you read a success story, the microwave tan right over here. You step in this door and in seconds you come out looking bronze and beautiful. I shall demonstrate. Matinee lady, when I get inside, set the timer for exactly three seconds. Do you understand? One, two, three. That's right. Seven is my lucky number. I hope it's his too. <laughs> Because, and I hope it, America will love this. <laughs> <laughs>
Come on, let me play. Watch it, I'm gonna jump off now. Oh, oh, I love to see it hop like this, don't you? Uh oh, here I come. I'm in your melon patch now. Okay, here I go. I'm getting points. Oh, look at me go. Oh, oh, stop landing. Uh oh, 350. 750. Oh, here I go. I'm jumping now, huh? Oh, oh here I come. The stud pun. 5,000 points. Oh, wow, Mr. Parker, I've never gone this far before. Let's not be a bad sport, Mr. Parker. Come on. You want to play? Okay, it's your turn. Go ahead, start. Here we go. Jump up. Here goes your little guy. Hop, hop, hop. Oh, you're doing real good. Into the fly feast. Yummy, yummy. Oh, you're by the breeding pond. Lucky you. Uh-oh, watch out for traffic. Here comes the truck. Be careful. Here you go. Down, oh, up, oh, look at all these points you're getting. You're going to be a father. Look at all your little tadpoles. Aren't they adorable? Uh, watch it now. There's a little danger here. Be careful. Uh-oh, uh-oh, uh-oh. You got warts. Oh, no, you got gas. Swamp gas, the worst kind. Oh, dear, oh, dear. Oh, you're losing so many points. Oh, dear. You're on the way to biology. Oh, no. Oh, dear. Well, looks like I beat the inventor at his own game. Mr. Parker, don't play games, Mr. Parker. Mr. Parker? Mr. Parker? Oh, Mr. Parker. And speaking of bassoons, here's our man. Charms to soothe the savage breath. You'll need the New York Philharmonic to calm those down. Okay, friends, on to our musical. In lesson one, you'll learn the musical scale. Show them what you've learned so far, matinee lady. Thank you. Do, re. <laughs> well, go on. I haven't gotten that far yet. Well, that's all right. You'll be up to me tomorrow. teach you to read actual sheet music. And for those of you who like to have fun while you practice, you can read contour sheet music with the notes right on the sheets. I'm going to wash that man right out of my What mouth. a voice. Better use a medicated shampoo with that. Friends, here they are. That's right, friends. I'm talking about cow bagpipes. You needn't take time away from your busy milking chores to practice. We've taken care of that for you. You can learn to play and milk at the same time. Remember to shake the bag if you want buttermilk. <laughs> it's a tip. We could shake you if we want buttermilk. I think you've got yogurt on the brain. You know, one time I dated a musician. One time you went on the bivouac with a marine band. Get out of here. <laughs> Friends, all done at horns for us. Friends will also teach you how to play the minute waltz. You never take that long. Yeah. <laughs> because I was doing it pizzicato, oh. friends. So anyway, come down to Horns R Us, where our motto is, Trumpetus Conteri Judicum Dizzy Gillespie, which translated means, boy, have we got horns for you. How do you get there, you ask? Oh. Simple, you take the San Diego Freeway to the Garden Grove Freeway to the Fiesta off-ramp, then you get off. After you get off, you get back on till you come to the Slauson Cut-Off. Get out of the car, cut off oh, your Slauson. <laughs> Then you drive six more miles so you see the giant piccolo with a neon spit valve. That's us. Now, friends, back to our movie. The Mills Brothers, the Step Brothers, the Andrews Sisters, the Mandrell Sisters, and Dump the Wonder Pigeon in Seven Brides for Seven Bellhops. We'll be right back. Mm. Oh, we're back already. Friends, 
Yes, we'll get back to our second feature in a moment. Slim Pick and Slim Whitman, Chubby Checker, Fatty Arbuckle, and Hung the Wonder Sloth. <laughs> Andy Hardy gets palm dandruff. But first, friends, I want to talk to some of you Timmies out there. Do you spend all day cooped up in the house? Or are you pale and pasty? Is your face so pale that Pillsbury asked you to be their summer relief doughboy? Was the last time you had some color in your cheeks the day you got drunk at the company picnic and mooned a beehive? Well, then maybe it's time you got outdoors and learned to sail the boat. That's right. We'll teach you how to raise your spinnaker, unwrinkle your jib, and hand crank your winch. Wow. Yes, friends, and roll now. In Southern California's most popular college for sailing, Poop Deck Deck. That's right. At Poop Deck Deck, we'll teach you how to speak nautical talk. You'll thrill to yourself when you hear you saying things like, lash the mainsail, douse the mizzen. And keep the big wooden part in the water. <laughs> I think it's time to change the bulb in the lighthouse here. You'll learn to identify certain sounds of the sea. For example, here is the sound of a foghorn. And now you hear the sound recognized by all sailors of a whale mating. And now the sound of a whale that wants to mate but is unable to. saddest sagas of the sea. <laughs> we'll teach you how to recognize destroyers, frigates, and aircraft carriers. I know how to identify carriers. You were identified once as a carrier. <laughs> now, friends, if you've had bad luck fishing and are running low on provisions, we provide you with a nutritional supplement, dehydrated whale blubber and instant orange drink mix called Harpoon Tang. <laughs> Okay, as you know, with our plan, friends, you'll be able to enjoy weekends with your loved one because you'll be sailing him peacefully across the bay. I christened the... Well, I guess I christened him earlier. I christened the... Stick, get him out of here. In Ruth Roman Roy Rogers, Rex Reed, and Throb, the Wonder Giraffe. In Gidget Gets Herpes, part two. So long for now. Excuse me, Rosedan? Yeah. Uh, I'm Colt Seavers. I understand you do a little stunt work every now and then. Yeah. Well, I'm coordinating uh, stunts for a big picture coming up. Yeah. And I'm going to need some especially attractive women who can do stunts. Are you interested? Yeah. Now, the fact is, I'm going to need four girls, and you came highly recommended, along with a, a girl I think that's a friend of yours. Yeah? A Rhonda Starr. Yeah. Uh, you, uh, could you uh, help put me in touch with her? No. Well, why not? She's out of the country. Well, how far out is she? Mexico. She's not coming back. Uh, we'll be paying awfully big money. Hey, Colt, trust me. This time, she thinks she's hitched a wagon to a star. I mean, a real one. Jerry Rome? Thanks. You're a real gentleman. Wow. Hiya, baby. <coughs>
Well, I bet I'm gonna lose my job spending all this time with you. <laughs> well, if you get fired, I'll just have to marry you and take you out of all this. <gasps> wow, you sure don't waste much time, do you, boy? Yeah, I haven't got a whole lot of time, Doreen. That's the point. I like my singing anyway. Oh, it's beautiful. You know, with a voice like yours, you ought to be a recording star. Gee, thanks. You know, as soon as I can afford it, I'm headed for Vegas. If I could afford it, a, a ranger, maybe I could get a job in a lounge, maybe the sands or something, you know? How much uh, money do you need? Well, more than I ever got making a joint like this, that's for sure. Well, I want to I wanna help you, Doreen. I do. Wow. You're so sweet. I have I have never felt such a powerful need for anybody in my whole life. Wow. Alvin, if you were a rich dude, you could help me, take care of me, my kid, you know, get my career started. Well, it would just be. Hey, hey. Never, never judge a book by its cover. <laughs> What do you mean? Well, I got a little business proposal that I know you're just going to love. I love love. Don't you just love love? Doreen, I'm making this prescription out in your name. Here come the girls now. Oh. Aren't they gorgeous? What's the matter, girls? We just saw a terrible accident. There was a man lying in the alley, all cut up and bleeding. Cut up and bleeding? His head was mashed in. His nose was broken. His chest was crushed. Yeah, and both his legs were broken. Must have tripped. No, he came in here with his girlfriend. They ordered a big meal, and when the check came, he only had a buck and a half. That's right. Oh, I'm getting out of here. Wait a minute. Where do you think you're going? I got plans. What plans? Like living. Forget about living. We're going to have a good time. The girls are here. We're going to have a nice dinner. Bowling team all here now. Come on, girls, let's sit down. We're gonna have a terrific meal. Nice atmosphere. Good company, good food. What are you doing over there? I like to stand near the door. I need fresh air. Otherwise, my underwear locks. Yeah, well, get over here and I'll unlock it for you. Oh, boy, that love of money brought. Oh. Ooh. 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 I'm so lonely. Wait up. Bonsoir, mesdames and messieurs. And what would you like? Uh, just bring us the check. What do you mean, just bring us the check? We haven't had anything to eat yet. What have you got? Monsieur, everything is on the menu. Oh. Well, take it back and bring us clean menus. <laughs> what would you like? Oh, I'm not really very hungry. Good. Just the steak, well done, steak. and sushi medium rare, and yeah. flounder alfredo, yeah. lamb almondine, chicken a la king, glinda salamort, glazed ham, canned yam, carrots, french fries, and a tab soda. It's the Orson Welles diet plate. One Orson Welles diet plates. One Orson Welles. One Orson Welles. <laughs> now, how about you, monsieur? Uh, I'll just have the grilled cheese. Uh, one grilled cheese. One grilled cheese. One grilled cheese. <laughs> one grilled cheese. Oh, with mustard, mayonnaise, and ketchup. Yeah. 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 Will you cut that out? And you, monsieur? I'll have the chicken soup. One chicken soup. One chicken soup. One chicken soup. All right, enough already with the yelling. I've changed my mind. I don't want the chicken soup. Bring me the pea soup instead. Hold the chicken and make it pea. <laughs> How about you, madame? I can't make up my mind. Hmm. May I suggest the beef tongue? No. I never eat anything that comes out of an animal's mouth. How about a couple of eggs? <laughs> Hey, would you care for some wine? Oh, ah, wine, wine yes, yes, that's a very good idea. We'll right. have a bottle of your very finest wine. Thank you. How about a bottle of muscatel in a brown bag? Oh, how about a bottle of musc... <laughs> Will you shut up? Here you go, monsieur. Ah, thank you. Yeah, 1862. Hey, that's a little old, isn't it? <laughs> ah, okay, now we'll take it anyway. Excuse me. Oh, okay. Good. How about a toast, huh? Sure. All right. Here's to Hollow. Here's to Gable. If you lean over, you'll break the table. <laughs> <laughs> well, where are they from? Uh, where are you from? Texas. Oh, I thought that was flat country. Hello.
Hello, Mr. Don's Insurance Company. Neat or shoddy? We'll insure your body. <laughs> oh, hi. Gee, thank you. Of course, I'll tell Miss Parton. Thank you very much. Bye. Hello, Miss Crock. I'm back. <laughs> Did we have a good time with those two little starlets, I'm wondering? Yes, we did. <laughs> and what did we have to eat for lunch? Oh, uh, who could eat? I just watched them swallow. <laughs> I, Don, I, please. I, I, no, 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 oh, no. Oh, I, by chance, I see I have a memo. <laughs> I was just about to give that to you, sir. Um, the French movie star, Bridget Lalola, called to say she's coming over to talk to you about buying some insurance. I don't need any. No, she wants to buy some from you. Oh, of course, of course. Wow, Bridget La Lola, big French movie star. You know, you sure have come a long way since you insured Furman the Fire Eater against Zippo poisoning. <laughs> yes, I have, baby. Oh, yes, I have. Now all the stars want to be insured. Yeah. Dancers want their legs insured. Actors want their faces insured. <gasps> that reminds me, Dolly Parton just called. She wants them insured. Now listen, sweetheart. When La Lola, La Lola or La 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 La, whatever the hell her name is, when she arrives, I'll be in the conference room. You buzz me, okay? Okay. <laughs> Trick or treat. I had a good time. Oh, let's hope so. Bonjour. I am Brigitte La Lola. I'm here to see Monsieur Don about insurance for my two little puppies. Oh. You mean you want to insure your dog? But of course. Won't Monsieur Don do that for me? I've heard he's the perfect one for that. Oh, really? Oh, yes. All my friends say he's for the dogs. <laughs> oh, he'll be glad to hear that. Let me just buzz him and tell him you're here. Hello, Don. Miss La Lola is here. So will she. <laughs> Miss, would you mind taking my two puppies for a walk while I talk to Monsieur Don? No, I always do this on my time off. Merci. <laughs> Hello, little boy. Come on. Hello, come on. Hello, come on. We just wanted you to get such a... And this is Carol Wayne from the Carson <laughs> Show. Carol. No, I couldn't, I couldn't. Hi, nice, hi, hi, wow, hi, nice. This lady will never drown. <laughs> Carol Kane, well, those are our guests, everybody. These are our judges, and you'll never find. Let's hear a big hand for our understand the word tip. I can't even make my nut. But I am a very enterprising young fella. Enik vanakuzi merchandising. Ba ba da ba da ba da bo da bo da da bo da bo do do. Is that all you think about, Edmundo? Money? No 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 no. Would you welcome Carol Wayne? It's been, it's been quite a while since we have uh, done that, isn't it? Yes, it is. You can count backwards, too. That's great. Yeah. <laughs> That's what I was doing today, counting back to see the last time we did it. When was it? Well, it was several years ago. That's right, then, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> I wasn't. I was in Playboy. I am on Playboy. That's I'm right. in the stands now. That you are in the stands, right? Yeah. yeah. Why, why, you decide, why did you decide to do that? I suppose they called you and then asked Ask you. Ask me. Ask you, yeah. Yeah, and I wanted to see it, too. I hope you don't mind that I named it 101 Nights with Johnny. That's what the article was called, yeah, because yeah. you had been on the show, I guess, 100 and... Well, 94 of them was on this show, for sure. <laughs> uh, nice to see you haven't changed at all. No. So, what else is new in your life besides that? Surf 2? I don't know why they giggled when I mentioned it. Because there wasn't a Surf 1. And this is the oh, end of a I trilogy. I see. There wasn't a Surf 1? There wasn't a Surf 1, and this is the end of a trilogy.
trilogy. Ah, Janet, I thought you were taller. Pretty cute, yeah. 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 I got it. Yeah. That's kind of yeah. clever. Yeah. What do you what do you play in Surf Two? A mother. Really? Yeah. Well, that's nice. Uh, I'm on Espanicello, all grown up. Yeah. Well. I this, can't swim. This is the first time we've had. Uh, this, I feel like I'm in a reunion. <laughs> really? Those only for them both. Yeah. No, no. The girl next door, don't we? Not really, no. Except not, I probably live next to a gambling casino in Las Vegas. In, not in my neighborhood. So what else is new to you exciting? I understand that you... Well, come on. How about Playboy? Give me a Well, that's break. exciting, yes. I mean, really. <laughs> has, it led... has it led to other things? I've got a six-page spread. <laughs> yes, you do. You yeah. certainly do. Interior shots and everything. Yeah, I know. That shows, actually, shows the home and the, the everything. Yeah. Uh, somebody, uh... The photographer who takes those pictures? Yes. You know, he usually just has one assistant to help him, like, move the lights and stuff like right. that. Right, sure. This guy must have really been good. He had 83 other guys. 83 assistants. Yeah. Some people are slower than others. Somebody told me you just bought a dog. Clever, huh? <laughs> Is that true? Yes, but, um... Well, it has been that long then. Three years ago, he was a puppy then, when I bought him. Yeah? Ten weeks old. I what was on Thursday, and I went out to buy plastic plants. I was really going to cut down on my life, you know, wipe off things. So were. I bought a bulldog puppy instead. Really? Something that needed diapers, almost. That yeah. Is... They're built like little bowling balls. But very gentle. Oh, they're very nice indeed. Only old ladies, though, know that they're very nice. They go... I, I know he looks mean, but I bet he's just as nice as he looks bad. And that's the truth. Men are terribly scared of this dog. They go, does he bite? No, not me. <laughs> Don't think it. <laughs> you know, he's a logo for a Mack truck. You know this dog? Yes, for sure. Okay, he has a problem uh, wiping off his mouth because he has no nose. You know? How does he smell? Not bad. He's just a camera. Oh, that no, joke. No, this is a real dog. Yeah. I've unfortunately taught him a terrible uh, habit that I didn't mean to do. I meant to do just the opposite, and then it turned out just the wrong way. Huh? He was scared of shopping carts. Well, and and it was a Halloween and a full moon, and we ran across three shopping carts. So you know how, like, horses are with their eyes on the side of their head, that this table and that car and the house all look the same size? Sure. Well, I thought it would be just the same. So I taught him to make friends with the shopping cart. Now he more than loves them. I would never have to say rape for help, just shopping cart. He'll attack. Speaking of Polaroids, here's the queen of the 60-second cinema herself. And of course, I'm talking about... Yes, holy! Yes, friends, it's our matinee lady who's an expert on Florida. I know how Florida is shaped. Yeah. <laughs> if you don't, nobody does. Friends... Within walking distance of your property is every imaginable recreational facility. Yes, I'm talking tennis, golf, and an L.A. Raiders cheerleader with poor eyesight and amnesia. <laughs> At Yellow Fever Estates, you're so close to nature that Bigfoot has been sighted in the area. If you don't believe us, this is the men's room key they give out at the local Texaco station. <laughs> Friends, Yellow Fever Estates is located on a man-made lake. I didn't know lakes could be made by men. Why not? You have friends. <laughs> Yellow Fever Estates. Yellow Fever Estates is a very educational area for your children. They'll learn, they'll learn a foreign language. They'll speak better than I will, first of all. <laughs> but they'll learn a foreign language when they hear a Cuban fisherman swear in Spanish after a bull alligator bites off his bongos. But friends, <laughs> when you own a home in Yellow Fever Estates, you won't need to purchase a long jockey. Because outside your front door is a Seminole Indian up to his nipples and quicksand, begging you to throw him a branch. <laughs> Friend, your property is also located near churches, which will come in hand as you as plead with God to take your life and get you out of this rat hole. But friends, <laughs> you say you want a hot tub? We'll provide you with your very own jacuzzi. The meal jacuzzi. A man who will make you and your wife squat in the backyard while he pours scalding minestrone on you. <laughs> oh, I don't like it that hot. 
On a clear day, you can see the Glendale friends. <laughs> Remember, friends, we are the only development of Southern Florida that provides you with both indoor and outdoor plumbing. Yes, here is the indoor plumbing. <laughs> and here, friends, is the outdoor plumbing. <laughs> friends, at Yellow Fever Estates, we expect to have electricity before the end of this decade. But you... <laughs> So you'll be able to find your way around in the bedroom in the dark. We'll provide you with this. Something we call the headlights nightgown. How do you turn the brakes on? I'll give you a driving lesson later, friends. Right. Yes, friends, right for our free brochure. Please allow four to six weeks for delivery. You'll deliver after four to six margaritas, but friends... toll-free number. Our operators are standing by. For $50, they'll lie down. But that's another story. <laughs> or come to our sales office in person. How do you get there, you ask? How do we get there? I'm wondering. Somebody gets asked. <laughs> Friends, you take the Golden State Freeway to the Ventura Freeway to the San Diego Freeway until you come to the Slauson Cutoff. Get out of your car. Cut off your Slauson. Get back in your car. <laughs> that's right, Friends. Then you drive 362 miles north to the San Quentin Prison Shower Room. Elbow your way through 56 nude soapy convicts. Remove the loose tiles in the corner. Climb into the scroll crawl space below. That's our main sales office. Now back to our movie. Orson Welles, Orson Bean, James Dean, Butterfly McQueen, and Shampoo the Wonder Crab. And Dirty Harry gets his magnet measured. Oh, we're back already, friends. We'll get right back to our feature. The Marx Brothers, the Rich Brothers, the Righteous Brothers, Dr. Joyce Brothers, and Quickie the Wonder Mate. In the three stooges get neutered by a power mower. But first, friends, let's talk furniture. Is, is your furniture old and shabby? Is your carpeting starting to smell like a non-union slaughterhouse in Pakistan? Are you using as a kitchen table the flat head of your youngest child? Well, then maybe it's time you came down to Southern California's leading discount furniture warehouse. Sit on this. Or as our friends south of the border call it, Casa de Cardboard. That's right. All of our furniture is 60% off. How can we do this? Because we cut out the middleman and steal directly from the convents while the nuns are at mass. That's right. And sit on this. We have occasional chairs, occasional tables, and occasionally a representative from the Better Business Bureau who's trying to shut us down. All the stuffing on our sofas is fire retardant because manure does not burn. Right? We have all sizes of beds, doubles, kings, twins, queens. In fact, our salesmen are twin queens, Neville and Werner. But that's another story. My living room is practically empty. There's not much left in the loft either, friends. When you buy a sofa from us, you'll have hundreds of fabrics to choose from. Would anyone like to see a swatch? Remember, remember, guys, all of our love seats are guaranteed. If you fail the score, bring it back and we'll give you the phone number of a woman who'll make your hair stand up like Art Garfunkel. Friends, we'll send you, we'll sell you this complete bedroom set, complete with bed, dresser, end tables, and lamps, all for $149.95. How do we do it? Because you get everything you see here, actual size. Wow, what a little cutie. We hope you have a very small life. Yes. Friends, you say you can't afford new furniture right now. We'll reupholster your old furniture to look just like new. Everything I have is reupholstered. They did a great job on the cushion. Friends, show them, show them our latest end table. Friends, I'm talking end table. We also carry... No pride at all. Friends, we also carry a full line of clocks, desk clocks, wall clocks, and this lovely antique grandfather clock. When you wish to know the time, simply open this panel. It's 6.15. <laughs> carry our own papers. We have to because there's no holders in the bathroom. Friends, what about bar stools? Oh, no thanks. I'd rather stand. It's new for you. Look, friends, it's sit on this. All of our furniture is American-made. Foreigners from Taiwan make the furniture, but Americans like me make the money. If you have any complaints, if you have any complaints, and I have one now, come visit, come visit our complaint department. Our 
convenient hours are 3.58 a.m. to 3.59 a.m., of course, unless we're on a lunch or coffee break. So friends here, sit on this. Don't worry about your credit. Got no job? We don't care. Got a bad credit rating? We don't care. Got a prison record? We don't care. Don't expect to pay us? That's when we care. <laughs> Take the Hollywood Freeway to the Harbor Freeway, to the Long Beach Freeway. Drive until you come to the Fort in the Road. And right. Then, friends, you go eight more miles till you see the giant rattan cabinet maker trying to break one of the Ten Commandments on an autumn, and that's us. Now back to our movie, Gary Cooper, Gary Cohen, Ronald Coleman, Ronald Reagan, Ronald McDonald, and Wang, the amazing Chinese bull. And King Kong makes the Eiffel Tower rusty. So long for now. Eli Khan. Nice. I'm Candy. I'm a great admirer of your work. Gee, thanks, mister. I'm trying to show my friend how to enjoy life. Can we take you to dinner? Um, I gotta get my groceries home. That's okay. We'll eat at your place. I'm a fantastic cook. He is. Figure a guy like you, huh? Hello? Yes, I would. Yes. I accept Visa and Master Charge. But um, now is not a good time for me. Could you call back late tonight? Yes. Right over the phone. Bye. Business. Not candy. Men never Did forgive betrayal. Have been so wonderful. Women want blue. He has passion. Right? He's a romantic from another time. Lean. Aesthetic. You're very cute. Yeah, you are. <laughs> I should go. Thanks for the dinner. I should go. Dance. It was a terrific dinner. You cooked. Oh, 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 I've been loving you. What's with you two? A little too long. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want it's to kind of awkward. Now. We're both very attracted to you. Oh, and we both want to sleep oh, with you. Don't make me stop 
Sorry. Oh, Thank you. 